ABC Grandstand Digital. Grandstand NRL Replay. Hello, I'm Ned Hall. Welcome to a little delve into the ABC Grandstand archives. Today, we'll be looking at the New South Wales Rugby League Grand Final of 1983. Parramatta Eels going for a third consecutive title and a replay of the previous year's Grand Final as they were taking on Manly. The Eels were coached by Jack Gibson, captained by Steve Edge and a side... Uh, that contained so many legendary players, Michael Cronin, Steve Eller, Eric Groth Sr., Brett Kenny, Peter Sterling and Ray Price and some very familiar names in the Manly lineup as well with Chris Choppy Close, Kerry Boosted in there, captained by Alan Thompson, uh, Noel Cleal, Paul Vortin, all in their lineup that was coached by Bob Fulton. Uh, the ABC commentary team on that day uh, was led by Alan Marks along with Reg Gasnier and Mike Stevenson and also expert comments too from a young St George coach, Roy Masters. Enjoy. Only about 25 metres short of the halfway line. The other tackler there was Paul McKay. Ball is played back. Peter Wynn takes it from dummy half, and he's 20 metres from the halfway line. Referee Kevin Roberts right on the spot. Now the dummy half is Stephen Edge. He runs it away from the ruck, but he's easily caught there by Jeff Gerrard, just tr- trading him across. Still 20 metres inside his own territory. Stan Jurd, this is safety first tactics. And talk about coaching. There was uh, Parramatta, the dummy half, just running it up one at a time drawing the defence closer and closer each time and inevitably it led to the penalty that had to come. Referee Roberts penalising Manly for being inside the five metres. That's what you call settling the play down immediately and uh, the players also in a game like this, it's great to get the ball first and get involved immediately by going in, being tackled, getting the feel of the game and the atmosphere and it was obvious there when uh, they went one out there, Parramatta, one, two, three, four tackles. Manly were caught inside the five and now Parramatta on the attack. With a lovely kick by Cronin, finding touch, 32 metres out from the Manly goal line. Peter Sterling taps it. He runs it across the ruck, gives it away there to Paul Mayers, who's caught and slammed to the ground by some good defence from Manly. Only 25 metres out from the line. McCabe and Brown are the tacklers. The dummy half win gives it to Jert. He br- twists away from a tackle of Gerard, but he's been caught again by McCabe. Still about 25 metres away from the goal line. The other tackler on the spot was Ray Brown. Back to Stephen Edge. There's Peter Wynn to the open side. Paul Borton goes low. Over the top comes Chris Close. Together they put him down. Now now back to Ray Price. On to Sterling. Long pass goes wide. Kenny gives it to Cronin. He's got Ella there. Ella almost through. Got a pass back behind the ruck. Picked up by Cronin. He's caught by Gerard and Alan Thompson. Rebo comes in to assist and the three of them put him down about 24 metres away from the Manly goal line. Played back to Paul Mayers who goes from dummy half. Goes crunching through a tackle of John Revo, but he was covered instead by another of the Manly defenders and that was Phil Sigworth. The dummy half is, P- is Peter Sterling. He puts it onto the boot with a high kick that's coming down near the posts. Across field, players from both sides. Loose on the ground, there's a scramble for possession. It looks as though Manly have got it close to their goal line. Manly have got it. The ball has been played. It's taken away by the dummy half. Close has been caught right in front of his own posts and only 15 metres out. Ray Brown, dummy half for Manly. There's Gerard taking the ball. On the open side, twisted out of a tackle of Stan Jurds, but over the top there was support there by Paul Mayers. Paul is, is played, given to Vorton running wide on the far side. He tries to bump through a tackle of P- Peter Sterling's, but there were two or three other Parramatta supporters on hand to put him down. Back from Brown, it goes towards Blake, who kicks over the top. A long kick, running towards the touchline. Getting back there is fullback Taylor. He keeps it in play, runs it back towards the halfway line. He's got Lydiard in support, but he runs into a good tackle by Ian Schubert, putting him down on the halfway line. No score in the grand final for 1983, as the ball goes from Price back to Lydiard. He twists out of tackles, and then is driven backwards by McCabe. And Ray Brown, those two doing a lot of tackling together. Stephen Edge is the dummy half. He sends it to the blind side. Sterling along past the Mayors running wide. He can't unload the pass as he's well tackled, tackled by the Manly defence. Chris Close right up on him to take him ball and all. It's gone from Price away towards the second rower. Sharp. And he had no way of bustling through that very rugged defence indeed with Jeff Gerrard and Chris Close together. Now out to Sterling. Long pass goes to Cronin. He kicks a high one. Getting back there is Rebo. The ball will come down to fullback Edie. Takes it on the full. He's got Rebo in support, but he's caught around the legs by Brett Kenny. Its ball is played. Given from Thompson. Back it goes to, Al- uh, to Philip Blake. Gets it out to Sigsworth, who's out near the wing, who comes back in field, and he's almost up to the halfway line where he's been caught by the Parramatta defence. 
Sigsworth plays it. The dummy half is Blake running it to the blind side. He twisted out of a couple of tackles, crossed the halfway line, caught in Parramatta's territory, and will play the ball there. So the ball is shot out wide. It's gone from Gerard to Vorton in amongst the forwards. He's knocked to the ground with a good solid tackle by, I think, Stan Jurd getting involved in the action. From Ray Brown, it's gone again to McCabe. Caught around the leash, got out of it by Price. Throws a pass beautifully to Bostead. Out on the wing, Bostead coming in field. He's tackled almost down on the Parramatta quarter line. Pressure now for the Eels. It's gone from Schubert out to Alan Thompson. He gives it to Blake. Dummies to kick now. He puts it on the air. Coming up for it is Taylor. The ball swirling in the air. It's Manley's ball. It's knocked backwards. Given to Vorton. Vorton again puts it in the air. Parramatta players wait for it. Down it comes. It bounces away. And Peter Sterling's got it. He tries to run away from Blake. And Blake runs into ground. There's good football there. And particularly from Vorton. Immediately putting that ball back up again. It's a penalty to Parramatta which will get them out of trouble. But it was a lot of pressure there from the Manly side, putting those two kicks in the air. And it was very noticeable when that ball got high in the air, how it did to swing back. So it's obvious that these bombs are going to be very hard to control. Good football from Manly, but it's a pressure uh, has been taken off Parramatta now with that penalty. And uh, at, at this stage, Manly looking well, defending well, straight line, moving up. And Parramatta in no hurry to get anywhere, just uh, taking their time. But uh, there's an error now from Mayers, and it's a surrender possession. Kevin Roberts jumping on a, a, uh, an indiscretion by Phil Blake there. An early penalty to uh, Parramatta. Blake going in with a swinging arm. And Roberts has shown that he's not going to tolerate that in the very early stages of this match. Former international referee Gary Cook watching very, very closely the performance of Kevin Roberts, who's in charge of this afternoon's grand final. Ball put in the scrum by Alan Thompson. Scrum screwing around a little bit. Ball not coming out. Held up in the scrum. Both halfbacks waiting for it to emerge. The Manly scrum collapses. The ball comes out to the blind side. And there is a penalty against Manly in the scrum. And hooker Ray Brown and prop forward Jeff Gerrard were both on their backs on the ground as the penalty has been awarded to Parramatta. And so with the use of the breeze, Mick Cronin to look for touch on the far side. And another good kick by Cronin. Gains about 25 metres. Takes play deeper into uh, Manly's territory. Ball started into play by uh, Stan Jurd. He just tapped it forward and ran into the Manly defence and was caught around the bootlaces there by Ray Brown. It's gone from Sterling out to Stephen Edge. There's Sharp calling for it. He turns it back inside. Ray Price not able to get through as he ducked under a tackle but straight into it that was affected by both the prop forwards of Manly, McCabe and Gerrard. It's gone to Steve Sharp, a dummy half. He turns it inside, and away goes Taylor. He's breached the first line, gives it away now to Wynn. Here's a chance, a bad pass by Wynn. That's gone out to Lidiard. He runs it across field. Lidiard across field again. Caught around the legs by Philip Blake. Parramatta losing just a little bit of ground. But it was a nice little break started initially there by Paul Taylor. Sterling gives it out wide. It's turned inside now to Mayers. He's dropped the ball, gathered by Vorton. He's caught by Mayers, only 25 metres away from the Manly goal line. It's the second time Paul Mayers has dropped the ball there, and uh, early mistakes are, are very important to control that ball. It's the second time he's lost it. Probably uh, nerves would, would come into it, but he's, he's, he's overrunning. He's a little bit uh, too eager. To, uh, to, to get on to that ball. Well, here's a chance for Manly. Parramatta at least. The ball goes out to Lidiard. He's going for the corner. Thompson tackles. It's picked up. Peter Wynn going for the line. Is he over? It's a try. That's been scored by Brett Kenny, is it? Brett Kenny scored the try. Some confusion on the part of the Manly defence as the ball came out to their right. And Brett Kenny... Able to scoop it up. And Kenny opening the scoring in the match. Ten metres in from touch. First points on the board after eight minutes of the game. The man they were caught napping there, and it was, a, it was a lucky one for Parramatta. And just as well, Brett Kenny was there supporting the move. The ball going out to the left-hand side to Lydiard, who was quickly... The cover defence was across, but he, he threw the ball inside. And then Kenny backing up was able to scoop it up and went in for the try. That's a very important one, obviously. First points on the board in a grand final, in final in any match. It's very important. But in a grand final, it's, uh, it's really put Parramatta on the boil, and that'll give them a lot of confidence. So Mick Cronin to line up the conversion attempt, and he's placing the ball about five metres in from touch. And the ball placed back on the quarter line. Pretty difficult kick for Cronin. 
the blustery Sal Easter will tend to take the ball from right to left and what Cronin should do is to aim practically at the right hand upright and have the breeze bring it back a very strong breeze as the bits of paper are blowing across his path as he moves in the ball out to the left and swung further away it never looked likely it was aimed just to the left hand upright and the breeze took it further away from the posts so Mick Cronin, who hasn't really had the happiest of goal-kicking records here at the Sydney Cricket Ground in Premiership matches, certainly he scored a lot of points in representative games here, but when you go back through his record, uh, his goal-kicking leaves a little bit to be desired on the cricket ground. So it's four points to nil in favour of Parramatta. The ball back to halfway and Ian Schubert to restart. It was noticeable in that conversion attempt too, the influence of the wind. That ball veered sharply there and uh, it's it's very strong up high and I'm sure that we're, we're going to see quite a few uh, bombs and uh, there'll be a lot of difficulty in taking them under the conditions. Well, there was a switch in play from the kick-off by Manley as they feigned to kick off towards their right. It was kicked off out to the left. It went to Graith. And now Peter Sterling kicks downfield using the breeze. The ball bounces and won't find touch. Getting back there is Bostead. He keeps it in play cleverly. Brings it back towards the halfway line. Trying to get away from Taylor and Sterling. And the blonde-headed duo of those two Parramatta players put him down. Bostead plays it to McCabe. He's caught, though, by Taylor running in to affect the tackle. And over the top comes Ray Price. Back to Ray Brown. On the open side is Vorton. Took the pass well. He's wrestled to the ground, though, by the defence. The ball came loose, and there's a penalty to Parramatta. Price has been penalised for pulling it loose. I uh, had the feeling myself that the ball just came loose, but, uh, Gary, did you have an opinion? There was a hand in there from one of the Parramatta players trying to drag it out. Whether that was the exact result of the ball coming loose, I'm not sure, but it certainly did come loose from uh, Vorton. Anyway, there's been a penalty awarded to Manly, midway between the quarter line and halfway. They've found touch. Second kick by Ray Brown. He's got Blake out wide. He passes on now to Thompson. Out wider is Sigsworth. He goes behind Sigsworth. The ball's loose on the ground. Knocked down by Manly and Parramatta pick it up. And Parramatta again go into attack through another Manly error that really must be making Bobby Fulton shake in the grandstand with Manly uh, committing those errors, giving the ball back to their opponents. And Stan Jurd on the second tackle is going to play at about eight metres inside Manley's half. Given to the blind side to Peter Wynn. He's nicely tackled, ball and all. No way he could get it clear there with a good tackle affected by Close. So the pass comes out from Taylor and he runs it across field, straightened up the attack, ran into a tackle though of Ray Brown and is held down in the centre of the ground. Taylor to his feet. Price dummy half. Sends it to Cronin. Price doubles around. The ball is reversed. It's gone to Sharp to Sterling. Up the middle he goes. Stepped away from Schubert. Gave it to Taylor. He dummies out wide. Taylor goes down the middle. Caught by Vorton. Over the top came Ray Brown once more. And eight metres inside Manley's territory. Tackle number five is gone. Ball is played back. Wind dummy half out to Sterling. He kicks downfield. A grubber kick for the line. Rebay gets back. Gets a good bounce. Takes it easily. Runs it towards the quarter line. Tries to run away from Kenny who takes him. Lovely tackle head on by Brett Kenny. A quick pass clears the ruck. It's given to Edie. His first chance to get involved. He tried to bust the defence after crossing the quarter line, but was held by Sharp, Wynn and Edge. Now the pass goes towards uh, Vorton. He's caught by Jurd, Edge and Mayers. And the entire front row putting him down. Back to Ray Brown. He passes to Gerard, running strongly. Another good low tackle by uh, Steve Sharp. Dummy half is Ray Brown, switches play, gives it to Cleal. He looks for a way through. A good tackle there by Stan Jurd, holds him up, ball and all. It's been a very clean opening to the game. There's been no spite in it whatsoever. A little bit of uh, pretty tough tackling, but that's to be expected. As the ball is put downfield, it's well fielded by Taylor. He got a high kick put to him, and Taylor has taken the ball and now has upended for his troubles only about 12 metres from the halfway line. The tackler was Cleal. The dummy half is Lidiardi, goes off from, from that position himself and gets it to within five metres of the halfway line, almost in centre field. Parramatta's ball, it goes from the dummy half, running strongly as Cronin, looking to breach the defence, but he reaches the halfway line before he's knocked to the ground there by Paul Vorton. So Mayers goes from dummy half, he looks for a way through, trapped to the ground there by both Vorton and Gerard, and only a couple of metres inside Manley's territory. Manley are trailing Parramatta by four points to nil. As Parramatta throw it to the back line, Cronin gives it back there to Sterling. He gets a pass out towards lock forward Price. Back inside, steps away from Schubert, gave it back to Taylor. Unloads now to Sharp, he unloads again. It's gone from Wynn to Mears. Mears gets a pass back to Jurd. Jurd erupts to the halfway line to Cronin. He gives it to Kenny, who can't get away from Close. And Close wraps him up only four metres 
over the halfway line on tackle number five. Wynn gives it back to Cronin, he turns it to Edge. Up the middle he goes, gives it back to Kenny, out to Weller. Heller away to Grape down the touchline. Blake across, Blake is going for him, but he's in in the corner. A magnificent try to Grape. The Parramatta fans have gone wild. A superb try to Eric Graith, and how often have we seen him, do, seen him do it? As he had very little room, very little room on the far touch line in which to move, but somehow he kept evading the tackles and he reached over there in the corner. It's eight points to nil and the kick to come. Magnificent football and the build up to it just prior to that movement. The Parramatta moved the ball, they, they, they weren't moving forward, but it was quick hands. There was always a player in support to take that ball. And from that to play the ball was great work again, keeping it alive, out to Weller, on to Growth. Growth had nowhere to go, straight down the line. He beat, pushed off his uh, his opposite number, and uh, Graham Eady moving across had no chance. He, Eady grabbed hold of Growth, but he's too strong and powerful and went in for another try. Parramatta looking very good. Mike Stevenson, your thoughts on the try coming head on towards you. Go to Mike Stevenson after uh, the uh, conversion attempt. Mick Cronin to uh, attempt the conversion. Wide out on the far side. He has the breeze assisting him. He's placing the ball on the quarter line. And uh, just having a look at it, he's oh, only a matter of centimetres in from the touch line. That will indicate to you just how little room in which uh, Eric Graith had to manoeuvre as he burst onto that pass and just kept going down the touch line. How he wasn't put into touch, I've got no idea, but just the brute strength of the man was able to uh, uh, keep him in play. It's 8-0. Here's the kick coming from Cronin. Moving in. Looks all right. Yes, he's got it. <laughs> So it's 10 points to nil, and Steve-O, uh, how did you see that try coming towards you on the far side? Well, it was sensational, Alan. Only a man like Eric Groth could have scored that try with uh, the full-back, Graham Eady. Not, uh, not the slightest of full-backs in, uh, in Sydney, but he certainly threw through every ounce of effort into that and just took, uh, took Eady over the line with him. But uh, it's as I sus suspected, Alan, that uh, Parramatta, they're throwing this ball around with gay abandon. From the kickoff, the ball has gone from Taylor and he unloaded now to Eric Graith who bursts across field and then is tackled by Ray Brown in the centre of his own quarter line. Eric Graith playing it. Steve Edge dummy half. Goes upfield himself. Can't evade the defence and he's wrestled to the ground by two of the Manly defenders. Going to play it. Still short of the halfway line by about 25 metres. Peter Wynn running it up strongly. He gets to within 20 metres of the halfway line and then is wrestled down by the manly uh, hooker Ray Brown. Out now to Peter Sterling. Again, the kick is over the top. It's a long kick. Will it be too long? It bounces once, twice. And a magnificent kick by Sterling from 20 metres inside his own half. And he's taken play to within 20 metres of the manly goal line. A gain of uh, the best part of 55 metres in that kick of Peter Sterling's. And a scrum to go down on the far side of the ground. That's good play from Parramatta there. That quick kick by Peter Sterling. Just breaking up that uh, manly understanding and defensive pattern. Uh, Parramatta racing to that 10-0 lead and Sterling building that ball down. The object, of course, will be to try and keep Manly pinned down in their own uh, own uh, quarter line. And uh, I expect that we'll see, uh, no doubt, Phil Blake try and clear that line. And that would then get, if he doesn't make touch, will give Parramatta that possession. But it's important for Parramatta to keep Manly pinned down in their own quarter line. Phil Sigsworth going for a run now for Manly and he's just crossed his own quarter line. He's about 30 metres out from his own goal line. Plays the ball back. Brown out to Thompson. Sends a long one to Schubert. Running with the backs. He dummy to get a pass away. Out to Close who was alongside him. But he was knocked to the ground on a good tackle of Sterling's. Plays the ball to Rebo who goes to the open side of the ruck. He's caught by Mayers and also second row a win. And knocked to the ground 32 metres out. One tackle to go. It's given back to Blake. Kicking downfield. Waiting for it is winger uh, Lydia. Takes it on the full. He tries to run it away from Bostead. Across field he goes. A nice little step. Got him inside the tackle of McCabe's. But he's been wrapped up by second rower Noel Cleal. 
Lydiard plays it. Back it goes. Win out to Price. Gives it to Cronin. Out wide to Weller. He gets it out. No, he doesn't. He had Graith outside, but he took the tackle instead as Ian Schubert moved across in cover to put him down on the halfway line. Ella plays it back to Cronin. Gives it inside to Price. Back to Cronin. Cronin up the middle. He goes. Gone through the first tackle. Eventually caught around the legs there by Gerard. He's 10 metres inside Manly's territory. Parramatta are leading Manly by 10 points to nil as it goes out to Price. Out on the blind side of the ruck for Parramatta. And he's midway between Manley's quarter line and the halfway line. Going to play it back to Wynn. He sees Cronin calling for it. Wynn yet gets around him. Wynn is going hard for the defence. And eventually is knocked to the ground. Good defence there by Alan Thompson and Paul McCabe. Paul Taylor goes to dummy half, 32 metres out. He unloads to Sterling. There it's gone to Cronin over the head of a couple of backs. It's given a price. who puts the ball in the air. High in the air. Edie waits. He's in goal. Edie is taken in the tackle. Can't force his way. Yes, he can. He's very, very close to the field of play. The referee says he's got out over the goal line and he's going to play it. Bang, it goes to Rebo, running it away from the goal line, and he's tackled about 10 metres out from the goal line. Incredible to Parramatta play. The players are uh, positional. I don't think they know what positional uh, situations mean. They had Ray, Ray Price in that, that time was an outside centre. He put the ball, immediately received it, he put the ball in the air. It's very noticeable also from Parramatta's play that Mick Cronin has involved himself, went in possession, straight in, getting the first pass from the ruck, has involved himself very much in the early part of this game. Manley have got the ball, they're on their own quarter line and the uh, pass has gone out to Phil Sigsworth in the centres, he'll play it back and Thompson unloads, a little kick put through by Blake, he's chasing it through himself, getting across there though was uh, Parramatta support seeing that Blake was going to kick he got across, that was uh, sharp it's come from the play of the ball, out wider now and it's gone out to Kenny, he dummies to Weller, Kenny goes down the touchline looks for Graith, Graith uh, lost the ball, Kenny had it and it was being knocked into touch and a scrum will go down on the far side of the ground. Kenny tried to get the ball away to Eric Graith. It was knocked down by a Manly player. And so the scrum feed is going to be by Peter Sterling. And with a Parramatta feed, we see Alan Thompson go out to 5-8 with Blake at the scrum base. And it looks like a win against the head here to Manly. Scrum collapsing. No, it comes out Parramatta's way. Peter Sterling dives on it. Parramatta's ball inside Manley's territory from Price out to Taylor across field he goes caught by Vorton good tackle 28 metres out from Manley's goal line plays it to Sharp on to Cronin he goes back to the open to the blind side got a one-handed pass away picked up by Stan Jurd down the middle he goes Jurd's made the break he gives it to Taylor Taylor runs into trouble as he's knocked to the ground by Gerard and also halfback Philip Blake Paul Taylor inside the quarter plays it to Weller he goes from dummy half Runs head on into a tackle of Paul Borton and is held down about 15 metres out from the Manly goal line. Ella to his feet, the dummy half throws a long pass. Taylor gave it there to Price, who's knocked on. Very simple mistake there by Ray Price, one we don't see very often from him. But a simple knock-on is going to force a scrum down inside Manly's quarter. No, I don't think he'd be very happy with that. Uh, it wasn't a too difficult pass to take there, but... Uh... Uh, and Ray Price wouldn't have been happy at all but uh, Manly at this stage are finding the passing of the Parramatta side uh, difficult they, they can't cover quick enough but uh, Manly have now got the ball but uh, as I said Parramatta will try and keep them down their line but at, the, at this stage Parramatta doing it very well indeed we've had 19 minutes of the first half uh, in the match Parramatta leading 10-0 and looking very good and the ball is played back to Ray Brown and he goes across field slips the ball back the other way to Sigsworth who looks for a way through caught by Mayers and uh, Edge Stephen Edge, who's had a remarkable record in grand finals. And uh, that's one thing Parramatta have got in their favour today. But Rebo plays it back to Ray Brown, and he slips. No, he dummied the pass. It's loose on the ground. Vorton can't get it. Vorton dives on it, a rebound off his shins. Manly allowed to retain it. One tackle to go. It's gone across to the blind side. There's Philip Blake kicking downfield, and the ball is much too long. It's problem time for Manly now. Nothing's going for them. Well, there's a scrum going down midway between the quarter line and halfway. Let's get a quick summation on his thoughts from the first half for the first 20 minutes. Roy Masters. Oh, yes, Alan. Uh, I think that one of the most important things about the tactics is the, is the fact that uh, Parramatta are playing exclusively to John Rebo's wing. Every time they get the ball, they just move it straight across to uh, their right side, of course, which is uh, Manly's left side. Uh, it's quite obvious that Jack Gibson went into this game with the belief that uh, John Rebo, uh, left-hand side of the field, just uh, is not a good uh, side of the field to defend. 
have, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and of course, uh, that's a, you know that's a, a difficult sort of a difficult passing too, passing from left to right. The natural inclination of most footballers is to pass the other way, and uh, they're just hitting his side of the field all the time, and. Uh, and uh, everything's coming up trumps for them at the moment. Roy, have you uh, seen enough of Manly in possession to have some idea of uh, what the, how they might be playing it? Mate, they've got no chance. They have. They, they just can't do anything. Uh, they're starting to uh, stand around with their hands on their hips. Uh, they're bunching in attack. They're, they're running uh, one out from dummy half. Uh, they're kicking out on the full. Uh, I don't know what Bozo's going to say to them because uh, they're just not doing anything. OK, Roy, well, that, they might, that might be the boldest prediction of all time. 20 minutes into the game, and uh, Manly are training Parramatta by 10 points to nil. Thanks, Roy Masters. We'll come back to you at half-time. We've seen a knock-on by Parramatta inside Manly's territory and a scrum to go down about 12 or 15 metres inside Manly's territory. No, Claire wasn't very happy with that decision because he, he felt that it was knocked out of his hands. But nothing seems to be going for Manly at the moment. Uh, there was that, uh, that kick out into touch and uh, also it was noticeable, as I mentioned before, what would they do with Ray Brown running across the face of the... Uh, of the Parramatta Ruck. Well, Peter Sterling answered my question. Sterling went straight into him and uh, really belted him about two metres back and uh, Brown lost the ball. So it's obvious that uh, they won't tolerate anything from the Manly hooker. Well, there, here's a differential scrum penalty going to Manly. Manly trainer is out on the field delivering an instruction. Over to Gary Cook. Well, Noel Cleal may not have been happy and Jeff Gerrard was uh, even less happy. He had a lot to say to Kevin Roberts, but there's no way in the world that a Parramatta player knocked that ball out of uh, Noel Cleal's hands. So Manly have found touch. They're inside Parramatta's territory. It's gone now to Ian Schubert, who's tackled about nine metres inside Parramatta's territory. Plays it to Brown, given to Gerard. Lovely tackle by Stan Jurd, diving at his legs. Plays it to Brown. He gives it back to uh, Noel Cleal running up on the edge of the ruck. Cleal, Cleal is knocked to the ground there by Peter Wynn. Ball goes back from Brown on to Vorton. He's running it up strongly. Wynn comes in for the tackle, diving at his hips to bring him down. Back it goes to Brown. On now to Blake. He gives it to Thompson. He dummied back to Blake. Blake's got it. He's caught by Price. Knocked to the ground on tackle number five. They're 24 metres out. One tackle to go. Will they put up the bomb? It's gone to Sigsworth. He tries to kick. Waiting back there for it is Kenny. Up they go. Kenny's got it. In fact, he's like, no, he's still got it. That was well done there. Kenny again, that ball swirling back there. And he was, he was challenged by Sigsworth, but Kenny was able to take it and took it well. It was, uh, it was, it was doubtful there for a while, was able to regain and uh, then got on with it. Played the ball and now Parramatta in possession. Steve Sharp it is running it up the centre of the ruck, runs into a tackle head on of Phil Sigsworth, who wrestles him down and Sharp is going to play 20 metres out from his goal line. Mears is dummy half, runs it away from there himself, runs it away from Cleal and from Thompson. Look for support. He gave, no, he wasn't going to give it. Cronin would have been in front of him. On the quarter line, Mayers plays it. Dummy half is win. He tries to evade the tackle of Thompson. He passes though. Edge gives it to Sterling. Who's away? He's got Taylor coming up. Gives it to Cronin. Cronin beats the defence. Gives it beautifully to Price. Price tries to kick the ball ahead. It's snapped up. The referee says he's dropped it. There's a scuffle on the ground between Price and uh, a Manly player. I think it's close. On the ground, Chris Close and Ray Price. Ray Price dropped that ball. It, it landed on his foot, and I thought he might have been entitled to claim that as a kick. Anyway, your opinion, Gary Cook. Well, Price tried to kick that through, and Price visibly was annoyed because he wasn't able to chase after the ball. He may well have knocked it on. What he wanted to do, I'm sure, was try and nullify that knock-on, and Close held him back. That's the reason why the scuffle broke out. This will be Close's um, second caution. Bill, uh, count on the scrums and penalties. Yes, scrums are two all, no tight heads, and Parramatta favoured in the penalties, 3-2. Scrum is going down, 11 metres inside Parramatta's territory. It's centre field. Ball put in the scrum by Alan Thompson. It comes out Manley's way. Quick pass to Blake. No, it's Edie on the open, open side. He flicks it back there towards Sigsworth. Going back the other way. Caught by Wynn, Jurd and Edge. Still about five metres inside Parramatta's territory. Sigsworth. Back it goes. Brown unloads. There's Blake on the Vorton. He's got close out wide. Can't. Yes, he can. Got through Taylor's tackle and Mares, but not the Cumberland throw there of Ray Price. Plays it to Rebo. Infield it comes. Blake gets a long pass. Alan Thompson away to McCabe. Running with the backs. The prop forward is caught around the legs by Peter Wynn. McCabe plays it back to Schubert, who looks for support. Schubert dummies cleverly. Gives it to Rebo. It went the wrong way. Loose on the ground. And a golden opportunity for Manly. Schubert heard the call from Rebo, but he passed away from him. 
and Revo would have scored it had he got the ball. Instead, Parramatta came up with it. They've slung it wide and quickly. It's gone from Lydiard out on the far side into touch. That was bad football. Bad football indeed there. They should never have been in a, in a situation there. Lydiard been thrown into touch. Well, Lydiard, in fact, had come right over from the left wing out on the far side. That would suggest that uh, those comments from you, Roy Masters, were spot on with uh, Lydiard moving away from the, the left wing. And there we found him out on the uh, far wing, virtually marking uh, John Revo, uh, Roy. Yes, uh, well, uh, you know, it's, it's just happened so many times now that it's obviously been built into the team. Um, uh, the, the, they have a raving commission with regard to Lydiard and the lack of confidence in uh, Revo's ability to attack, uh, his ability to defend. Um, Interestingly enough, uh, when Rebo in turn, when Manly get the ball, uh, Rebo's a blithe spirit. He's uh, running from dummy half across field. Um, and uh, now we see a situation where uh, Manly are deep inside uh, the Parramatta territory and they're moving the ball across to the wing where Rebo isn't. <laughs> he's uh, he's taken the ball up from dummy half an earlier. Thanks, Roy. Roy Masters giving us uh, the tactics that the two coaches are adopting today interpreting the game through the coach's eyes we've seen the ball come loose and that's forced a scrum on the Parramatta quarter line Parramatta are leading Manly by 10 points to nil as a scrum penalty is awarded to Parramatta scrum penalty on their own quarter line again Cronin will kick for touch and just looking at the scoring details so far in the match we've seen two tries scored by Parramatta they came within five minutes of each other the first by Brett Kenny, the second by Eric Groth Cronin converted one of them and so the score is 10 points to nil in favour of the Eels with 13 minutes to go before half-time and Parramatta looking for their third premiership in a row. Good kick by Cronin, raises the touch judge's flag five metres short of halfway. Yeah, I like the way the position that Parramatta find themselves in. They're playing with a lot of confidence now and because why wouldn't they? They're 10 points in front. But the thing is, they're controlling the ball. They're not making the errors that uh, Manly have made. And here's another break. Yes, a beautiful break initiated by Sterling. And Brett Kenny's got the ball midway between the Manly quarter line and halfway. The ball is snapped up by Edge Taylor to Cronin. He's got Ella outside, calls Ella away. Ella goes up to the quarter line and he's caught there by Sigsworth. Steve Allen to play the ball. It's gone back to Lydia, who goes from dummy half, twists inside the tackle of Vorton. In comes Sigsworth and Thompson, and they hold him 20 metres out from the Manly goal line. Lydiard, back it goes, Taylor to Jurd. He runs it across field, right in front of the post. Got a one-handed pass to Sharp to Cronin. A good chance for Parramatta. Away goes Mears, going for the corner, looks for support. Lydiard's in, he threw the pass back, and it's loose on the ground, and Mears dies for it. But I think Manly might have it. What a tackle no. by Graham Eady there. Yeah, but it's Parramatta who've still got it. And it's little Peter Sterling putting through the kick. It's been gathered there by Close, who's been dropped to the ground by Wynn. <laughs> a penalty in front of the post to Parramatta. And my word, right in front of the posts, Chris Close got a haymaker from Wynn that knocked him to the ground right in front of our commentary position at the far end. Let's take you back up there to Mike Stevenson. Mike? Yeah, well, it certainly was a great tackle there, and uh, I think Parramatta very lucky to get that uh, penalty. It's uh, surprising that uh, Parramatta came up with that ball because Lydiard, being forced into the touch right into the corner, did well to keep the ball in play, but uh, Manley, very slow to come up with a ball. Well, uh, as a result of that tackle, a penalty has already gone to uh, Parramatta. Manly player offside. Mick Cronin is going to have a shot for goal from right in front. But uh, when Chris Close uh, took that uh, ball that uh, Peter Sterling kicked through, Peter Wynn was upon him very, very quickly and really knocked him down. And the penalty has gone to Parramatta. And since then, we've seen a, a caution issued to Peter Wynn for that tackle. Well, the penalty was given uh, before the tackle of Peter Wynn. It was ruled against Chris Close for being offside. When that little grubber kick was put through by Peter Sterling, it went straight into Wynn's, into uh, Close's hands and he was ruled offside. There's the kick by Cronin. An easy penalty goal to Mick Cronin. And Parramatta have gone to a lead over Manly of 12 points to nil. That's about 12 minutes before half-time. Parramatta 12, Manly nil. Good lead, Rich. My word, Alan, and... Uh... 
they're playing with confidence. Manly must be wondering just what they've got to do. But what they have to do, of course, is get their, their, their game together. They seem to be going out as individuals. And uh, at, at the same time, they're, they're working the ball with the Parramatta defence. This Parramatta side, well-drilled, well-trained. It's obvious that they've just taken that field. They know exactly what they're about. They know what they're doing. And the thing is to minimise their errors and work that ball. And particularly when they're in a position to throw it out wide. And it, as we've mentioned here, it's very noticeable. But it seems to be going out to that uh, right-hand side most of the time. Now, for the kickoff, uh, we've got Ella standing back at fullback, and uh, it's Schubert who kicks deep, and it's going across field. Ella getting back there with uh, Grave. The ball spins away from Ella, and Grave picks it up, but he meets a good tackle. Gave it away to Taylor. He's got Price running up the middle. Price stepping inside tackles, and Parramatta very, very quickly to get on the right foot as they uh, get the ball inside their own quarter. Stephen Edge runs it over the quarter line. And he's knocked to the ground and a good low diving tackle there by Ray Brown. Steve Sharp goes to dummy half and he again runs from dummy half. And the number of times that these Parramatta players have shown their desire to keep mistakes to a minimum, not taking any risks inside their own quarter, as Wynn gets a pass back to Cronin, he gets it out on the far side to Kenny, who's caught by Schubert and slammed to the ground midway between the Parramatta quarter line and halfway. Kenny plays it to Cronin, who passes to Price. Up the middle he goes. Vorton is around the legs. McCabe comes high. The, together the two of them put him down. Ten metres from halfway on the fifth tackle. Onto the blind side. Sterling, a grubber kick for the line. Rebounds off a, Param- off a manly player. Parramatta get the ball back. Peter Wynn's got it. He dummied the grape, got up to the halfway line. Knocked to the ground. The referee signifies a handover to Manly. And Manly have got the ball on the halfway line. They send it across the back line. Jeff Gerrard is out there. Gerrard crosses the halfway line and gets into Parramatta's territory. Back it goes to Ray Brown. There's McCabe to the open side. Going low in the tackle was Ray Price dragging him to the ground. Dummy half again is Brown. He looks for support. He finds it in Blake who goes down the middle of the ruck. He's caught though by three Parramatta players and is going to play at about 10 metres inside in Parramatta's half. Away from the dummy half goes Brown, giving it to Gerard. A clever little pass. A beautiful ball distributed to Ray Brown. He sends another long pass. It's gone out to Schubert now. He gives it to Rebo, who's caught there by Grafe. Grafe just grabs him by the jersey and puts him down on the Parramatta quarter line. It's tackle number five. One to go. Blake kicks. High one. Waiting back there for it is Kenny. Down it comes. He takes it safely in goal. Waits for the tackle. Rides the tackle of Sigsworth to the ground. And so Parramatta being caught in goal are going to restart with the goal line dropout. Once again, you can see the, the brilliance of this fellow, Brett Kenny. He, he realised that he had to take that ball. He knew he was going to get pinged. Sig, Sigsworth following that ball up, but he, it was safety again. Hands wrapped right round that ball, and all he could do was take the tackle and play safety first. Now Mick Cronin's about to, uh, to drop out. We've got about uh, eight minutes before half time, and Parramatta are leading Manly by 12 points to nil. The dropout went straight through Graham Eady, who... W- Looked to uh, power his way through those Parramatta defenders, but he was held to the ground by Price. Now it's gone to Philip Blake. He tries a little kick, but it's been intercepted. Sharp got it, and now it's gone out to Mares. He runs it up to the touchline, and he's been knocked to the ground by Cleal and by uh, Alan Thompson after crossing his own quarter line. Well, that was another situation there that, that's just not working for Manly there. Philip Blake with his, his little uh, uh, kicks through, that little chip through, and, and went uh, straight into the hands of, uh, of Steve Sharp there, and another opportunity was lost, and Parramatta back in possession. But, uh, well, you could bet your bottom dollar there that Parramatta are going to hang on to that ball. They won't, be, uh, they, they won't be doing anything silly with it. Steve Sharp just took it from dummy half into the Manly forwards. He's midway quarter line halfway. The ball goes to Peter Sterling. He dummied outside, twisted the ball back, and he gave it away. Way. Price got it to Jurd, and there it's gone to Kenny with a beautiful pass. Kenny is up over the quarter, a halfway line, caught in Manly's territory now with a part with a tackle from behind by Phil Sigsworth. Kenny plays the ball. It's gone now towards Win. He turns it inside to Cronin, back to Sharp. Has support in Taylor. Good defence there by Sigsworth and McCabe. That's five tackles gone against Parramatta, but they're inside Manly's half. Taylor gives it out. It's gone to Cronin. A little kick over the over the top. Cronin puts it in front of Rebo who gets to the ball first. Rebo tries to run it out over his quarter line. He's caught, though, on the far side by Stan Jurd. Rebo plays it. Dummy half Gerard Gives it to Blake. Out to Thompson. It's Edie giving it out now to Sigsworth. Caught ball and all by Ray Price. And got out of that tackle. There's a penalty against Price. Using the foot in the, in the trip. Ray Price has been penalised. Penalty goes to Manley. Gary Cook. 
Well, that's a very uh, highly publicised move of prices. He uh, he was sent off earlier this year for actually tripping a player. Uh, it was very hard to detect there, and it is difficult for a referee to detect whether the foot comes first or the arm. If the arm comes first, of course, it's quite a legal move. But referee Kevin Roberts has decided the foot came in first. Well, Manly have found touch, and it's Kerry Bosted who's got it for the Sea Eagles. He's midway between Parramatta's quarter line and halfway. Manley on the attack. Thompson got a quick pass back from Blake. Gives it to Sigsworth out wide. It's right. It's close now. He's breaking through. Close. Good run. Turns the ball back. Loose on the ground. And Parramatta have got it again. Oh, they Manley cannot do anything right. No, you're quite right, Alan. They, you, they can't expect to get into the game if they're going to make those errors. And that's noticeable. As soon as Parramatta get hold of the ball, that was one, two, three quick passes again to... Uh, to really capitalise on that Manly error. Manly, Bobby Fulton at half time, will, he wouldn't be very happy at the moment, I can assure you. Down 10, 12 nil, and uh, his team making mistakes. Obviously, at half time, he's got to let his players know that they must appreciate the ball. Parramatta certainly are at the moment. Well, there's some good front row play with Paul Mears running the ball up very strongly, and he was met by an equally strong tackle of uh, Paul McKay. It was a good tackle indeed that uh, bruised both players, I've no doubt. Now it's gone to Cronin, running wide in the centres. And he's knocked to the ground by Sigsworth coming in over the top to finish a tackle initiated by uh, Ray Brown. One tackle for Parramatta, just inside their own half. Ball goes to Sterling. He tries to kick. It's a long one. Waiting for it is Graham Eady. Eyes on the ball. Takes it well. Trip to the ground. And there's a penalty going to Manley. Ray Price has been caught in front of the kicker. And he acknowledged that to Kevin Roberts too as he uh, ran past him. So the penalty goes to Manly, 30 metres from their own goal line. And I just wonder where Manly would have been had they not had some of these uh, pressure-relieving penalties. Bill, what's the uh, the st stats so far on those? Well, the scrums are favouring Manly 4-2, no tight heads, and the penalties are favouring Parramatta 5-4. Manly have got the ball inside their own half, and it's McCabe who's been caught five metres from the halfway line. He'll get, he's going to play it to Brown. Gives it to Gerard, uh, doubling around. Gerard looking for support. Looked to get a one-handed pass away. But he's set upon by Stan Jerd before he could unload. Away from dummy half. It's given a clear now. Down the middle with a good weaving run. And the big second row is away. He's caught by Cronin and Jerd. Plays it to Brown. Gives it now to Gerard. Back to Brown. Looks for support. Blake's dropped it. Took his eyes off the ball. He was more intent on where the defence was. The ball came straight to him and he wasn't watching it. The ball went loose, scrum to go down, 32 metres out from Parramatta's goal line. Parramatta scrum feed. That's exactly right. He took his eye off the ball and again it's a Manly error. And of course Parramatta have uh, arrived with the ball again from that scrum. And of course Manly uh, are not holding the ball, not controlling it as well as Parramatta. And of course uh, Parra, they'll take the, the ball any time they can get it. But it's very obvious to me, uh, I think Mick Cronin's having an outstanding game there. He's in, you know, you think he's the second row forward at this stage. He's in amongst the, his forwards. He's there. Obviously he's chirping. He's talking to his guys. Come on, move it. And every time uh, something is needed, he's in there. Now as I speak, he's, he's moving out to that centre but this is typical of the Parramatta play they're interchanging all the time, keeping Manly guessing Parramatta have got it, they're just inside their own half, we've got about three minutes before half time, Parramatta 12 leading Manly nil in the 1983 grand final, Ray Price tries to grab a kick for the line, rebounded off a Manly player, Lydiard got it back, one tackle to go, Parramatta have got it, it's gone to Sterling he tries to kick this time, puts it deep downfield, Edie was waiting, Edie takes it on the full, on his quarter line the Parramatta defence is down, good tackle by Edge, he was bumped away from it but Paul Mears was there nevertheless to back him up Edie plays it, it's gone out wider long pass from Blake out to the centres Sigsworth tries another one, it's gone back from close to Sigsworth he's knocked to the ground though by the Parramatta defence only 15 metres inside his own territory from the dummy half it's, it's Noel Cleal up the middle again trying to bust through the defence but Steve Edge and uh, Stan Jurd were there on now to Brown he just gives the pass to Gerard, who was on the move inside him and Gerard is on the halfway line Ray Brown runs from dummy half then throws a long pass. Picks up support out wide and close. He's met by Jerd. Drops the ball. Parramatta have got it again. It's gone out to Taylor. Running to the left wing. Taylor is caught though by fullback Graham Eady. Headlock tackle by Ian Schubert. Putting him down on the quarter line. On the halfway line I should say. Parramatta have it. Mick Cronin runs it away. He went to get a one-handed pass. It's loose on the ground. Parramatta have lost it. So too have Manley. A knock on to both sides. There was Mick Cronin trying to get away his inevitable one-handed pass. It went loose. And as Manley had the opportunity to gather possession, they also knocked on. 
Scrum on the halfway line. Fed by Manley. Won by Manley. Thompson's got it. Gives it to Blake. Down the middle he goes. Met by second rower Wynn, who broke quickly from the from the scrum. Only about a minute and a half before half time. Ian Schubert, the lock forward across field, is decked with a lovely diving tackle by Brett Kenny. Rebo sends the ball in field. Thompson throws a long pass out to Sigsworth. The Manly players are standing flat footed. They're bunched on the far side. It's left to a flick pass to Bostead. Now Manly have got a chance. It's gone to McCabe up the middle. McCabe is running strongly. McCabe is caught around the legs. Turns the ball back. Here's a chance for Manly. It's gone out on the far side. They give it away now to Cleal. Cleal gets the pass away. No, he doesn't. He's still got it. Cleal plays it. It's Brown. Now out wide to McCabe. Tries to push away from Mears. The ball goes to Rebo. And the ball has been knocked on. Scrum to go down. On the Parramatta quarter line. Parramatta leading Manly 12 points to nil. Almost up to half time. It'll be a scrum feed by Peter Sterling of Parramatta. <coughs> ball put in. Comes out Parramatta's way. Sterling's got it. Tries to jink his way through on the edge of the scrum on the open side. No way through for him. I wouldn't have thought there was any chance that Peter Sterling would have uh, passed that ball then. He realised that, uh, well, there's the half-time hooter now. He realised that, right, uh, we've got to go get in. We've got to stop Manly. And we're leading 12-0. And he obviously wanted to play it uh, play it tight and very safe. That's exactly what happened. And as he was tackled, the half-time hooter has sounded. Parramatta doing it very well, 12-0. So the 12 points for Parramatta in the first half. Brett Kenny scored a try in the seventh minute. Eric Graith in the twelfth minute. Cronin has kicked two goals from three attempts. Parramatta leading Manly at half time by 12 points to nil. Scrums and penalties from Bill McGowan. Yes, Manly favoured in the scrums 5-4. Still no tight heads. Penalties favouring Parramatta 5-4. Parramatta have had one handover. In general play, Manly have picked 10 times and Parramatta 12. Right, and Bill, if you just give us the uh, first half tackle count uh, and then uh, we'll proceed in with the uh, opinions of our expert commentators this afternoon. Manly, uh, Chris Close in the backs 9. has had two cautions. Phil Sigsworth, 13. In the forwards, Ian Schubert, 7. Noel Cleal, 4. Paul Vorton, 16. Paul McCabe, 11. He's missed three. Ray Brown, 14. Jeff Gerrard, 15. For Parramatta, Ray Price, a big first half, 19. Steve Sharp, 14. Peter Wynn, 17. Paul Mears, 12. He's missed a couple. Stephen Edge, 11. And Stan Jurd, 12. Sounds to me, Bill, as though those back rowers for uh, Parramatta getting through a... Uh, a heck of a workload in defence. It sort of reflects on the Manly back row who haven't been. Yeah, just give us those again, uh, building comparison. Yes, well, you? Uh, the, the back row for Manly, Ian Schubert 7, Noel Cleal 4 and Paul Vorton 16. The Parramatta back row, Ray Price 19, Steve Sharp 14 and Peter Wynn 17. Thanks, Bill McGowan with the tackle count. Right, there it is at half time, 12 points to nil in favour of Parramatta. Uh, thoughts firstly from Rich Gasnia. Very professional performance, and uh, it's obvious that Jack Gibson has, uh, has done his homework and he has his players really primed. They started, uh, both sides really started tentative, checking each other out, letting the ball, but Parramatta playing safety first football. The usual uh, percentage football that we know, grinding away, looking for the openings in that, uh, that uh, manly uh, defence, and uh, they found them seven minutes into the first half when it was a great try by, by Brett Kenny after some good lead up work. It was a, it went out to David Lydiard's wing, the in pass there, but Brett Kenny playing a fine role in support, picked the ball up and went in for Parramatta's first try. That gave Parramatta the 4-0 lead very early in the piece. But then, then the, 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 a great try by Eric Groth. It was a, an Ella Parsi uh, onto Eric Groth, pushed off Rebo and uh, through he went. Graham Eady tried desperately to stop Eric Groth flying down that side and Eady's a big man but Groth went straight over the top of him Eady around his legs but went in for Parramatta's second try and a great tremendous conversion by Mick Cronin from the sideline gave uh, it was a tremendous uh, really fine kick and, and gave Parramatta lead 10 to nil and then uh, just 28 minutes into that first half uh, Manly were again caught offside near their post and uh, Mick Cronin was able to, to put the penalty over and that of course has given them the, the half time lead of 12-0 I feel Manly are playing with one out they're finding it difficult to get their attacking game together they're making far too many errors they're losing the, the, the ball on the first second, third tackles, that's no good they're not controlling the ball the same way as Parramatta are controlling but then again let's give credit, credit to Parramatta's defence because it's been superb, well organised and they thoroughly deserve their lead uh, at this stage, 12 points to nil Peter Wynn's playing very well indeed getting through a tremendous amount of tackling 
I think it's about the best I've seen Ray Price play today at lock forward. Bill mentioned, I think, 19 tackles for Ray Price, and he's doing a lot. And the tackles that count when uh, Manly have looked like making a break, Ray Price has been there in cover. Peter Sterling, very heady game. Brett Kenny, fine. Mick Cronin involved himself very early in the game into that, taking the first pass off the ruck. A, a, a tremendous amount of involvement early in the game, and it's paid dividends for his side, as I said, Parramatta leading 12 mil. Noel Cleal, the Manly player, every time he gets the ball, he looks dangerous. He's the one fellow that Parramatta, as soon as he gets the ball, there's two or three defenders fly from, from anywhere, everywhere, to get hold of him because they realise his potential. If Manly are going to get out of it, they've got the wind behind them. I expe expect them to kick in the second half, and I also think that they're going to rely heavily on the likes of Noel Cleal to make the breaks. But at this stage, Parramatta looking very good. Comments from Reg Gasney, a half-time score. Parramatta leading Manly 12 points to nil. Over now to Mike Stevenson. Mike, how did you see the first half? Well, Alan, uh, very, very professional uh, display by the Parramatta side, and uh, I fully expected, and it, Jack Gibson, their coach, has done exactly what he did in 1975 when uh, when he was coach at Eastern Suburbs where, against St. George, and really, they just threw that caution to the wind. Everyone expected a very, very tight uh, first 40 minutes, and especially the first 15 minutes, but uh, he certainly threw that caution to the wind. He realises that uh, Manly, of course... This is only uh, they've only their second game in a month, and uh, it would take them quite a while to settle into it. And of course, in that time and period that they had to settle in, well, Ma uh, Parramatta put two tries on the board, and uh, I think when you race away to a ten points to nil lead after only twelve minutes, I think you've got the writing on the wall. I think that Manly they're looking very tentative in defence, especially out wide in the centres. I think that uh, both Close and Sigsworth and the wingmen uh, Rebo and Boosted they're certainly not looking. In, going in quick enough uh, into that defence. The old stager Michael Cronin, well he seems to be mesmerising the uh, Manly three-quarter line. They, they're waiting to see what he's going to do and you just can't do that with a man of his capabilities. He's holding the ball, he's getting the ball out wide and it really is going to take a superhuman effort by Manly to get back and win this one. Thanks Mike. Mike Stevenson uh, giving us his thoughts on the first half. We're going to Roy Masters shortly, and Roy will give us an idea of what uh, he thinks both coaches might be saying to their charges during the halftime break. But firstly, let's get an assessment on the first half re referee, uh, Gary Cook. Well, Alan, I think the greatest compliment I can pay to uh, Kevin Roberts' performance in the first half is that nobody has really noticed him. There have been a couple of cautions. Uh, the game has been relatively clean for a grand final. It's, it certainly isn't lacking in toughness. It's uh, as hard as anyone would like it out there, but there have only been a few isolated incidents. Uh, he's picked them up fairly quickly with the aid of his touch judges, and uh, it's great to be able to say at half-time that uh, everybody's talking about the players and not the referee. It's... Uh, really what we were talking about earlier before the game started. A couple of the questions that I posed uh, I think have already been answered. Manley's week off uh, certainly hasn't done them any good and I, I get the impression that they've been sitting around for the last two weeks thinking about this one. They haven't handled the pressure at all well. They've been forced into error. They look uh, quite honestly I think this game is over unless uh, Parramatta's uh, performance uh, goes downhill very quickly. They've uh, won this game already as far as I'm concerned. They've won it because they've gone into this game much better prepared. It's certainly been proved in the first half. They've torn into the game as if they've been waiting for it all the year. And uh, their enthusiasm, Mick Cronin for one, looks as though uh, he's a youngster out there playing his first grand final. He's just uh, ripping into the game as if there's no tomorrow and uh, his experience is telling. The big, game, big guns in the Parramatta team are uh, showing out. The Sterlings, the Kennys, the Cronins and the Prices, they're having tremendous performances. But this little fellow at fullback uh, amazes me, and I think he's a tremendously valuable player in the uh, Parramatta team. He bobs up everywhere, little Paul Taylor. He gets through a hell of a lot of work as well. But uh, Manly, uh, after about 15 minutes, started to play as individuals, and uh, the writing really was on the wall there. Parramatta certainly a different team out here today and I can't see anything else but uh, them marching on to another triumph. Gary, from the referee's point of view, were there any incidents at all in the first half that worried you? No, I didn't think anything worried me at all. There was an incident uh, down near the Manly goal line when uh, uh, Peter Sterling put a little grubber kick across towards the posts. Kevin Roberts had obviously uh, seen uh, Noel, Noel Cleal. I think, no, sorry, it was Chris, Chris Close, Close, the Close. centre in an offside position. That ball uh, went very quickly into, into Close's midriff and he caught it. As soon as that happened, uh, Roberts ran over to penalise, but while his uh, whistle was still in his mouth, Peter Wynn came in with a high tackle 
uh, which he subsequently was uh, uh, cautioned for, and there probably was some reaction from the crowd over that. Now, the penalty had been given for a prior incident. There may be some opinion that uh, the referee can change his mind, but the referee, once having given that penalty, cannot alter the decision, and the only way he can alter a decision on the field is if a prior decision has been made in such an incident where a touch judge may have his flag up for a player going into touch or the ball going into touch, and uh, the referee, if he's given a decision after that has happened, such as a penalty, he can negate that and come back to that prior decision. In this instance, he can't change his mind. OK, there it is. Uh, comments from Reg Gasney and Mike Stevenson and Gary Cook. 12 points to nil, the score in favour of Parramatta. Ava Manley at half-time. Before the players come back on the field for the second half, let's take you across again to Roy Masters. Roy, from a coach's point of view, how do you see it? What would be said now? Well, I'm sure that the first thing that Bobby Fulton, the Manly coach, has got to do is take his players into the dressing room, sit them all down, and uh, without panicking, without showing any signs of anger or... Uh, or frustration to, to settle them down and uh, give them very, very simple instructions. And there's two things that he can do. One is he has the advantage of the wind, and so consequently, if he can attempt at all times to play the game in the Parramatta half, utilising the kicking abilities of, of Graham Eady, uh, Phil Sigsworth, and even uh, John Rebo. And uh, that way, of course, by playing the game in uh, the Parramatta half, he ha has a chance of a chance of victory in pretty much the same way. Uh, that St George were able to uh, beat uh, Parramatta by six tries to, to nil only about five weeks ago. Um, I had to get a plug in there, Alan. Anyway, uh, as far as, uh, as Jack Gibson is concerned, I'm sure that uh, what he will uh, do, and it could, it could work a little bit negatively, I would say that he would probably tell them uh, that defence is the most important thing in this world. It's been his philosophy uh, for a long time now, and he'll tell them that uh, all they have to do is tackle, 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 uh, and uh, to keep the score line at 12 nil. And pretty much the same way that he obviously told them uh, last week when they played Canterbury, because you will remember that they had a big lead against Canterbury at half time, and uh, in fact uh, Canterbury won the second half, and as they did, they did the week before. So uh, if Bozo plays his cards properly, uh, he has a chance in the first ten minutes of the second half of pulling this out of the fire because um, Parramatta will probably play safety first thinking of defence. Uh, Bozo has got to think in terms of playing it in the uh, Parramatta half with a kicking game and, and taking their chances and uh, maybe the first ten minutes uh, could turn things around a bit. But uh, without any shadow of doubt, uh, Alan, uh, you can bet um, the whole ABC on the fact that if, if uh, Manly don't score in the first 10 minutes, uh, they have absolutely no chance of winning. A very bold statement, uh, a very bold statement uh, early on that uh, Manly had no chance. They were gone. Do you? Well, you've got to give them some chance, I suppose, on the uh, first 10 minutes. But uh, you're still going for Parramatta? Oh, definitely, mate, definitely. Actually, there's a lot of telltale tale signs happening out here at the present time. You've got uh, you've got the manly uh, back rowers, um, Les Cleal and Ian Schubert, uh, thinking of the fact that of their days at Eastern Suburbs when they were centres and wingers. Uh, they're out uh, as wide as possible. You've got poor old Paul Vert Vorton who's tackled himself to a standstill in the last ten minutes of that half. He was out there in the centres as much as to say, well, if you blokes are going to come out there, I'll go out there too. Uh, little things are coming unstuck, a uh, lack of discipline and lack of that sort of tremendous harmony that uh, grand final teams uh, should have and understanding with each other. Uh, it'll, uh, it'll, uh, Bozo will have to be a Houdini right now. Roy, you said that uh, the first thing uh, Bobby Fulton should do is sit them down and very, very calmly tell them what they have to do. Is it easy for a coach to find yourself in this position 12 mil down to be calm? It is very, very difficult, extremely difficult, because uh, you, you tend to be so frustrated yourself with the, the stupidity and ineptness of players that uh, training and do everything right and then run out on the field and do everything wrong. So you, you do tend to be very frustrated yourself. Actually, uh, you know, just before you walk in the room, you, you've really got to settle yourself down and say, well, I'm the only bloke that can, can solve this situation. I'm the only bloke that can pull it out. Uh, actually, a very good nip of uh, whiskey helps, but of course, uh, we don't have those things at St George. <laughs> well said, uh, Roy. Roy Masters uh, giving us uh, his thoughts on the coaching. And Roy, if we may, we'd like to come back to you in about 20 minutes' time for another opinion from you halfway through the second half. Fine, Alan. ABC Grandstand Digital.
Grandstand NRL Finals Replay. NRL Replay. Hey, it's Declan and Marley from Sport and Spice, where the chat is well seasoned. Spicy even. Recently, we chatted to viral amateur golfer Harrison Crow. Every single one of them told him to shut up. Netball star Jamie Lee Price. You're all talk, Harry Styles. Race car driver Luke King. My first piece test was such a disappointment. And GWS defender Jack Buckley. To be honest, I just didn't think I was good enough at the time. Sport and Spice. Find it on the ABC Listen app and sprinkle some into your life. Be part of the Grandstand Sport team on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Search ABC Sport and see a world of great sport content for you to explore. ABC Grandstand Digital. Grandstand NRL Grand Finals Replay. NRL Replay. We've got the two teams coming out onto the field. The Manly team out for the second half. No change in the Manly side for the second period of the game. And just looking at the Parramatta team re-emerging from the grandstand and there don't appear to be any changes in the Parramatta side at all either. So 12-0 the score, it's all up to Manly now. They at least had the breeze in their favour, a very strong southerly breeze. It was uh, more or less a south-easterly before, but it has swung round a little bit and coming straight up the ground from the south. So uh, that at least is in, in uh, Manly's favour for the second period of play. Yes, I don't think they'll waste any time in uh, putting their boot to the ball. I think it's obvious that they've got to get down into Parramatta's territory and uh, get points on the board. And as Roy mentioned, it's got to happen in the the first ten minutes of this half. And Parramatta, realising this, no doubt, will set their defence against it and uh, will be concentrating heavily on that. But uh, I wouldn't be at all surprised to see one or two perhaps settlers and then bang, they kick the ball deep down to Parramatta, turning them around and hopefully uh, trying to keep them in their own quarter. But uh, it's interesting to note that, uh, or not interesting, that Graham Eady's playing his last game with Manly today and I noticed a couple of runs. He was very determined in that first half. I feel that he could be a trump for Manly. I think they need uh, his insurgence into that back line and I wouldn't be at all surprised to see him uh, chiming into that back line at every opportunity. So the ball on halfway. It's Mick Cronin going to restart the game. Moving in and puts the ball into the air and it's a long kick that goes almost to the goal post it's taken by Sigsworth on the full runs it up to the defence he's caught by Taylor coming in around the legs with Stephen Edge who wastes no time whatsoever in uh, settling that Parramatta team into its defensive pattern out on the blind side Graham Eady the fullback was standing it's played by uh, Eady and now it's been lost by Gerard. as he got a pass from Brown he just passed to Gerard, and so Manly have started off just the way Fulton didn't want falling into the same errors they committed in the first half. They've given Parramatta the opportunity to go straight into attack. Peter Wynn has got the ball 32 metres out from the Manly goal line. Wynn will play it back. Taylor dummy half. Passes to Jurd. Had Price outside, but Jurd got a high tackle. It's twisted out of it. More support there, though, in the defence of Manly through Gerard and Ray Brown. Still 30 metres out from the Manly goal line. The pass goes to the blind side. Sterling gave it away. Brett Kenny trying to weave his way through. There was Paul Vorton waiting for him and slung him to ground. Ball is played. It's gone from Taylor. Uh, across the ruck he goes. Look for support. Nobody was on the move, so he kept the ball himself. Steve Sharp has a look around behind him. He sees Peter Sterling calling for it. He's got Ray Price outside. Sterling tries the bomb. It's going for the corner. Rebo waits. Rebo's dropped it. Rebo's got it, though. It knocked backwards. And the touch judge's flag is up as Rebo dived on the ball. In all fairness to John Rebo, it was a difficult one in that it was over his shoulder. He had to look at the ball come over his shoulder, but he dropped it. And as he dived on it, his foot went into touch. Parramatta win the scrum. Close to the line. Here's a chance. Cronin close to the line. He's held up only five metres out. That was good play. Cronin playing as a 5'8". Came through on the burst to take the pass from Sterling. Ray Price from dummy half. Can't barge his way over. Two tackles gone. And Ray Price is down about five metres out from the goal line. Price back to edge. Passes to the blind side. Sterling gave it away. Brett Kenny trying to weave his way through. There was Paul Vorton waiting for him and slung him to ground. Ball is played. It's gone from Taylor. Uh, across the ruck he goes. Look for support. Nobody was on the move, so he kept the ball himself. Steve Sharp has a look around behind him. He sees Peter Sterling calling for it. He's got Ray Price outside. Sterling tries the bomb. It's going for the corner. Rebo waits. Rebo's dropped it. Rebo's got it, though. It knocked backwards. And the touch judge's flag is up as Rebo dived on the ball. 
in all fairness to John Rebar, it was a difficult one in that it was over his shoulder. He had to look at the ball come over his shoulder, but he dropped it. And as he dived on it, the, his foot went into touch. Parramatta win the scrum. Close to the line. Here's a chance. Cronin close to the line. He's held up only five metres out. That was good play. Cronin playing as a 5'8". Came through on the burst to take the pass from Sterling. Ray Price from dummy half. Can't barge his way over. Two tackles gone. And Ray Price is down about five metres out from the goal line. Price back to edge. Passes to the blind side. Steve Sharp's got it. Peter Wynn had no support. Goes back to the blind side. Caught by Rebo and Cleal. Still five metres out from the Manly goal line. As a long pass is thrown by Taylor out to Sterling on to Kenny. He looks for a way through, but he's smothered there in the tackle by Ian Schubert. And with that pass, Parramatta have lost about 20 metres, but they're still in possession as now Eric Graith doubles around. And he looked to go underneath the defence. Still 15 metres out from the Manly goal line. One tackle to go. So Paul Mears, the prop forward, tries the bomb. It's coming down close to the post. This must be a try. It's a try to Kenny. Brett Kenny, second try. And Graham Eady let the ball bounce. An unbelievable mistake by Manly. Paul Mears, of all people, the prop forward, putting up the bomb. And Graham Eady took his eyes off it. Only because the... The, the kick was so well placed that Edie was scared he was going to collide with the uh, goal post, with the upright. And as he took his eyes off the ball, he allowed it to bounce. And it bounced away from any Manly player. And Sterling and Kenny were there. Kenny waited, gathered the bounce, grounded it in goal. Kenny second try, Manly leading 16-0. Well, that's incredibly a bad play there. I just wonder why on earth uh, Graham Eady allowed that ball to bounce. And uh, any any number of Parramatta players could have scored that try. There was at least four uh, Parramatta players around the ball. It was left for Kenny to score his second try. He just had to pick it up and put it down. But uh, it was bad football. Here's Cronin's kick. Converts the try. Parramatta go to a lead now of 18 points to nil. 18 to nil. Parramatta lead Manly. And the official attendance just posted... 40,285. 40,285. And I think the Parramatta uh, proportion of those are very, very happy with the situation at the moment. No doubt, Alan. Yes, 18 nil is a magnificent position to be in uh, for Parramatta. Uh, I don't think they'll go off uh, doing anything stupid, although we just watched two uh, crisscrosses, and I think they'd be foolish to start really throwing it around. I, I wouldn't say to tighten it up completely, but still not to go throwing that ball around with Gay Abandon. Just keep, keep control of the play. I'm sure that's the way they'll do it. So Parramatta have opened the scoring in the second half. It's taken them only three and a half minutes through a very bad error by Manley to pace their third try of the match. To give them a lead of 18 points to nil, Parramatta have got the ball inside their own, just outside their own quarter line. And they're attempting to bring it back towards the halfway mark. Ball to be played on the far side. Stephen Edge whips it out. It's gone to Taylor, out to Cronin. He tries to bump away from a tackle. Sigsworth waits, gets a pass to Mayers. He comes up the middle of the ruck. Mayers is caught from behind by McCabe. Sigsworth lending assistance in the defence. Mayers plays it back to Stan Jurd. He runs it from dummy half. Across field, got a pass back to Steve Sharp who was caught by the jersey there by Ray Brown. That's tackle number five on Parramatta. Edge gives it away. Sterling gets it out wider. There's Cronin giving it to Kenny. A flick pass to Eric Grafe down the touchline. Grafe was caught in a flying tackle by Vorton, and that is a handover now to Manley. Manley have got it almost on halfway. John Rebo goes into the defence. He sends Sterling flying away as he hit him, but he was covered by some more defence out wider. There it's... Paul Vorton, knocked to the ground. Manley going back into attack midway between the quarter line and halfway. And they give it out now to Noel Cleal, the big second rower, who's taken around the legs by the uh, lock forward, Ray Price. Still it goes on the right side for Manley as they send another long pass. Here's Sigsworth making a butte break. He's going for the corner. He must score. He's over. That was a good try to Sigsworth. A cutout pass. And Sigsworth was in the clear before the Parramatta defence could wait to it. And a timely try for Parramatta for Manly. They really needed it. 18 to 4, kick to come. Very much so. Down 18 nil, and uh, just the, everyone was thinking the game was over. But that was good football for Manly. And 
they're going to need a little bit more of it. It's the first time we've really seen that they have some uh, attack there. But it was good play. Sigsworth was through that gap before Parramatta cover defence could get anywhere near it. He caught them napping on that occasion. It was a good cutout pass. Sigsworth on the burst. He just set sail for the line. And he went in uh, into the corner for Manley's first try. And they're, they're going to need a few more of those. But at least it's the first points on the board for Manley. So, here's the conversion attempt by Graham Eady. The ball placed on the far side of the ground and about four metres in from touch. Graham Eady has the ball placed on the quarter line. Parramatta players gathered in a huddle behind the goal line. And watching as Graham Eady has a difficult kick, he at least has the use of the breeze. Moving in, long and high, and straight. Good kick. So another two points to Manley. Bring them a little bit closer. 18 points to six. But they must uh, score two converted tries now to level the scores. That was a very helpful conversion, that one from Graham Eady there. It's uh, those extra two points. They've still got, uh, we've had five minutes, so we've got plenty of time for Manly to get back into it. I, I don't think they can, but at the same time, those two points could come in very, very handy. So back to halfway, and Mick Cronin to restart. And the ball falls off the mound. Very breezy conditions here. Cronin placing the ball for a long kick. And Cronin moving in. There it is, a long low kickoff that goes back to Graham Eddy. He takes it, gets a good bounce. Going to put it onto the boot and kicks it back into Parramatta's territory. It's gone over the head of Paul Taylor. He's surrounded by the Manly defenders. Taylor will pick it up almost on his goal line. And he's surrounded by the uh, Parramatta, by the Manly defenders. He ran it himself after dummying there to Graith. 12 metres out from the goal line. Stan Jurd gets a pass to Graith, who goes up the middle of the ruck, but he's caught in a flying tackle there by... Jeff Gerard. Ball played. It's gone from edge out to Jurd. Stan Jurd, a much improved footballer since going to Parramatta from North Sydney. Coming into the team after uh, Parramatta last week. Lost their two front rowers in Ron Hilditch and Jeff Bugden. Ball now played by, played by Mayers out to Sharp. And he crossed the quarter line before running into the Manly defence. Only 25 metres out from the Parramatta goal line. Parramatta 18, leading Manly 6. Parramatta throw a pass out towards the wing. It's gone to Ella, and Ella's through, cover to beat. He kicks ahead, waiting for it as Rebo. It bounced over the head of Rebo and into the touch. A brilliant player, brilliant centre. He was quick to realise there that he was, he was going to be cornered. He put the ball through and uh, hoping for a rebound, but on that occasion it was uh, a drop before John Rebo, straight over his head and into touch, and that, of course, is a manly feed. Alan Thompson feeding the scrum for the Sea Eagles. It's won by Manley. He goes across field. Dummy there to Blake. Be noticeable that uh, Phil Blake's played uh, very little part in the game in the last uh, 20 minutes, the last 10 minutes of the first half. He did try a few individual things early on, but uh, since then he's been kept very, very quiet. Ian Schubert plays the ball for Manley. The ball goes out now to Paul Vorton running with the backs. Stands in the tackle, looked to unlay, but no way for him. Put to the ground on the halfway line. Ray Price has been injured. He's receiving attention from Alf Richards. As Manly throw it wide, it's gone to Sigsworth inside to McCabe. Backing up beautifully. Stands in the tackle. But in comes Mears over the top, making sure he can't get that pass away. Ball is played back to Rebo. Out it's gone to Blake. Then on to Alan Thompson. Out now towards Schubert. Running strongly across field. Got a pass away. Nearly a break made by Close out wide. Close was waiting for the next pass to come to him as it was taken by Edie. But they try a kick in the air. It's drifting to the touchline. Kenny's got it, and he's still in play. Kenny very close to the touchline on the far side. Caught eventually by Sigsworth. Kenny plays it to Steve Edge. He unloads now to Ray Price. Caught head on by Paul Vorton and reached his own quarter line. Ball comes back clear of the ruck now. Out to Sterling to the blind side. It was Taylor who gave his pass away. And now Mears has been upended by the Manly defence. Mayers back to edge, onto the open side. Peter Wynn runs it up the middle. Now it's Steve Sharp this time. Sharp, back to edge. 
Then on towards Sterling. Out now to Cronin. Crossfield he goes. Stands in the tackle. Cleal came in to finish the tackle. But he got a pass back to Sterling. And Sterling has been gathered in by Cleal. Tackle number five against Parramatta. They're on their quarter line. A kick over the top by Sterling. Bouncing in front of Rebo. Over Rebo's head. But it goes to Edie. Edie passes to Rebo. And he's caught by Sterling and Taylor. So Manny have got it. Away goes Philip Blake. And Blake ran after beating the first line of the defence into the waiting open arms of Paul Mayers. He plays it. It's gone to Ray Brown. Got a pass to McCabe. Out to Vorton now. He's got Sigsworth outside. Vorton dummy to him. Throws a pass back to Gerard. Back it's gone to Sigsworth. He goes back to the far side of the field and is caught on the corner line. Parramatta defence. Now under pressure as Cleo runs it strongly. Cleo waits for support. He's put to the ground only nine metres out from the man from the Parramatta goal line. Philip Blake goes through the middle. Blake's looking for the line and he's held up on tackle number five. One to go. Long pass clears the ruck. It's gone to Schubert. Here's an overlap. It's gone to Close. Can they stop him? He's short of the line and it's a handover. Well, a close one for Parramatta there and I, I don't know really how they got out of that because Manley had the overlap close, steamed onto the ball. But again, brilliant defence, brilliant cover defence, one underneath, one over the top, stopped close in his tracks. It was the handover, and Parramatta uh, are now in possession. But Manly have started to get back again. They have lifted their game. They've, uh, it's, we're on the 11, 11th minute mark. They've been able to score that try. It's 18 6 at the moment, but Parramatta finding it a bit hard. Manly, as I said, on their game now, and it's a very interesting stage. Parramatta have got it inside their own quarter. It looks like Sharp, who's running across field. And. Uh... Steve Sharp is going to play it just short of the quarter line. Back it goes to Peter Sterling, the dummy half. He decides to kick a grubber kick for the line. A little bit too long, Peter. Only just. It missed only by half a metre or so. But out on the full, and that brings play back inside the Parramatta quarter for a scrum. The game has changed. Manly now uh, on fire. And I look there, I see them giving their signals. Graham Eady moving over. I wouldn't be too surprised to see him uh, follow up this ball. It's going to be a manly feed. It's uh, everything uh, points to a, a manly ball. Parramatta standing very flat in defence. They must keep this, the, uh, the, the, the manly players uh, out. But uh, manly in the box seat at, the, at this stage. Scrum feed comes out the same tunnel. The referee going to have it again. Referee Roberts had a bit of trouble with this scrum. Now it's won by, pa by Manley as Alan Thompson takes it from the scrum base. Out on the open side and he's been decked by the defence. A quick pass that goes out to Edie on to Sigsworth. Stepping inside, caught by Sterling, taking him around the legs. Sigsworth plays it back to Graham Edie. Here's Cleal. And again it's Taylor throwing himself at the defence. Noel Cleal rushing to the line. He's held up only a metre out from the line. Cleal to play the ball. Dummy half. Loses it. It's a penalty. Going to Manley. Stan Jerd diving on the ball. He wasn't the marker and he came from the side of the ruck. Penalty to Manley. And Alan Thompson calling up Graham Eady. And it looks like they're going to kick for touch. Eady, in fact, is going to kick backwards. <coughs> and uh, gains about 10 metres backwards. Now here's a wedge formed by the Manly forwards and a switch in play to the blind side. It's given to Cleal, who's put to the ground only about eight metres out. Well, Manly has survived that one. There's a player on the ground for Parramatta. It looks like Ella who's going to receive attention. Back to that shortly. It could be Steve Edge, in fact. Manly on the attack. It's Ray Brown giving it out wide to Gerard. Alan Thompson's knocked it on. It's gone up towards Par Parramatta. Giving it out wide. It's gone to Cronin on to Ella. Out wide in the centres. He's caught by Close. Very close to the touchline. Up to the quarter line. Ball is played to Eric Grave. And the whistle blows and the penalty. Ray Brown has been caught offside. Inside the five metres. He knew he'd been caught too. He is well and truly offside and uh, that's again a let off for Parramatta there. But Manly really on top there. They were attacking and 
and the ball was put through. Noel Cleal looking very dangerous at this stage. Those powerful runs, they had the switch of play to the blind side. Then they into the open side, and then Alan Thompson knocked the ball on, surrender possession back to Parramatta, and that's exactly what they wanted. It was a let-off for Parramatta because I felt at that stage Manly could have gone in. 26 minutes to go in the game, and Parramatta leading Manly by 18 points to 6. Parramatta have found touch, 15 metres from halfway. Ray Price gives the ball back to Jurt, who's taken head on by McKay, but he burst through the first defence and eventually is slammed to the ground by McCabe and Gerard, almost on the halfway line. Stan Jurt having a useful game for the Parramatta side today, as is Peter Wynn, and now the ball has been dropped by Parramatta, and it's gone away towards Gerard. Here's a replacement coming out for Parramatta. Parramatta about to make a replacement. As uh, we just wait with Manley on the attack, Graham Eady. The ball's been knocked down by Parramatta. Here go Manley. Chris Close in the centres has got it down to the quarter line. Manley starting to use their power game there. Graham Eady into the attack. Chris Close, they're using their strength now. Now across field, uh, the ball is Manley's in the centre of the Parramatta quarter line. 22 metres out. The ball from dummy half. Brown gives it to McCabe. He runs it across field. Caught by Price. In over the top comes Stephen Edge and also Eric Graith, who's in there playing like a forward. It's gone away now to Gerard, the dummy half, who runs it up strongly. He's taken around the legs by Steve Sharp, only 15 metres away from the Parramatta goal line. Out from the blo- from the ruck, it's given out there to Cleal on the burst. He looked to burst through on the open side and was held up in the tackle of Peter Wins. One tackle to go. Cleal plays it back to Brown. Brown tries the bomb. It's a high one across field. Players looking into the sun. It comes loose. Eventually taken by Paul Taylor, who just manages to get into the field of play and is going to play at about half a metre out from his goal line. I noticed earlier that Stephen Edge was on the ground receiving attention and now Edge gets the ball as it was passed back to him, not expecting it. Edge has uh, suffered a wrist injury. He's still playing. Whether or not he comes off, I don't know. But uh, we see that um, Don Duffy is waiting to come on as a replacement. Stephen Edge is still on the ground and is receiving attention again. Now on comes Duffy. And Duffy is on the field as a replacement. As a matter of fact, he's gone off again. Yes, I think they were just checking the condition that Stephen Edge would have to be injured. He's certainly not the one to... uh, Well, Steve Edge is going to play the ball. He's five metres out from the goal line. Don Duffy was taken on the field by one of the touch judges and he ran straight across to the touch judge on the far side. Now, Stephen Edge, having played the ball, has been replaced by Don Duffy. Stan Jurd gets a one-handed pass back behind the ruck. It's been picked up by Sterling. The referee reels that that was... uh, That ball went forward. And so we're going to have uh, Scrum going down. Steve Sharp has gone into hooker. Don Duffy to the second row. <coughs> so what bad luck for Stephen Edge, provided the Parramatta can continue on their way. If Parramatta can win this uh, game, bad luck for Steve Edge, who's played in so many grand final victory sides, uh, to be replaced with about 25 minutes to go in, in this particular game. Anyway, Sharp is a hooker for Parramatta. And we've got Manley in possession, only 15 metres out from the Parramatta goal line. So more pressure building here for the Parramatta defence. The ball is given to McCabe. He got away from a tackle of Duffy's, but he's been caught there by Mayers. And in comes Duffy over the top eventually to finish the tackle. McCabe plays it. It's gone from Brown out to Alan Thompson. Switch in play, gives it there to Blake. He unloads now to Gerard. The other way, it's gone to Cleal. Steps away from Duffy. Can't get away from... Yes, he does from Mayers. Now he gets a pass back to Rebo, stands in the tackle, gives it back to Cleal, then it's gone to Vorton. Vorton's trying to keep the ball alive, only is knocked to the ground by the defence. One tackle to go for Manley. Blakes throws a long cutout pass, it's a bad one. Loose on the ground. A misinterpretation by the Manley players, and Parramatta come up with it. That was a bad pass by Blake, he didn't really send it to anyone in particular. Two players just let it bounce and Parramatta came up with a 25 metres out from their own goal line. Parramatta are leading by 18 points to 6, 22 minutes to go. It's an interesting stage of the game too, the loss of Stephen Edge. I just wonder, a repossession, if, if Manly at this stage, I think uh, in the second half, Parramatta has spent most time uh, in their own territory. Manly have really applied the pressure at this stage and uh, 
Parramatta just can't seem to get themselves out. It was a, a knockback, a bit of loose passing there, but uh, okay, referee Roberts says carry on. And Bill, can you just give us the, uh, the scrum count of the stage when Steve Edge was replaced? Uh, the scrum count was 7-5 uh, to Manly. We've just seen a beautiful kick by Peter Sterling. Finding touch. The touch charge actually has uh, had a word to say to the Manly trainer who was on the field. And the touch judge has gone in to report to referee Roberts. And now the Manly trainer has been brought across. Gary Cook. Well, Les Boyd, of course, is the Manly trainer. Hence the uh, violent reaction from a section of the crowd. And Ke Kevin Roberts will be telling Les Boyd on the report from the touch judge that he is not to enter the field unless one of his team is down in an injured uh, state. Ball put in the scrum. It came out the same tunnel. Scrum is about uh, 32 metres out from the line. There's a penalty to Parramatta. Penalty to Parramatta. 32 metres out from the Manly goal line. And the first time that Parramatta have been in uh, an attacking position for uh, the best part of uh, 15 minutes or so. Mick Cronin to kick for touch. Yes, Alan, virtually since uh, Brett Kenny's try. It was a shock try in the second minute. So for that time... Uh, it's taken the Parramatta a, a, a long time to, to get back on the attack. On the attack they are, and Sterling's restarting the play. They're forming the bridge, and Sterling uh, doubling around, gets hold of the ball. Now, Manly, I feel if Parramatta can get in here with 20 minutes to go, it'll just about to wrap it up. And it's important for Manly to move up, not wait for Parramatta to come to them. They've got to move up and knock them down. Parramatta are attacking. They're only 15 metres out from the Manly goal line. We'll try and take you to David Morrow shortly for a, a report on the injury to Steve Edge. Meanwhile, here's uh, Ray Price taking the ball downfield for uh, the Parramatta side. And Parramatta only 10 metres out. It's given out to the blind side. Peter Wynn, he gives it away to Grafe. He can't get away from Rebo. Rebo gets him in a headlock, a half Nelson, a double leg bind and whatever else you like. Grafe couldn't get anywhere. It's gone out now towards Sterling. Unloading now out on the far side of the ruck. Steve, Ed, uh, Steve Sharp has got it. Second rower gets to his feet. Ball goes behind the ruck. Here's a drop goal by Ella right in front. And he's got it. No, it's missed. It was skewed off to the right-hand side. Yep. Alan, he had all the time in the world there, but uh, it, uh, he didn't hit it properly. He didn't make uh, contact, and uh, it, it, it shot off the side of his boot and went to the right of the upright. But uh, an interesting exercise anyway. But Manly now in possession. Well, Manly have got it on their own quarter line. Let's see if we can take you to uh, David Morrow. David, uh, are you getting us all right down near the dressing room? No, we'll try and go back to David later for the, uh, that report on the uh, injury to Stephen Edge. Meanwhile, Parramatta have got it. Uh, Manly have got it at least across their back line. And they're only 32 metres out from their own goal line. There's Ian Schubert running strongly across field. Got a pass inside, picked up support. A good weaving run downfield by Manly. Take them almost down to the halfway line. Sigsworth plays it there to Brown. He runs it up, then delays the pass, gets a long one out there to Cleal. Crosses the halfway line, trying to bump away from Wynn. Cleal still going, gave it to McCabe. Caught around the legs, then gave it back inside to Close, who's knocked to the ground by second rower Duffy. To his feet, Close plays it. Well, out now to Blake, one tackle to go. Blake tries a little kick over the top, but it's been fielded by Steve Sharp, who in turn has been caught by John Rebo. So Parramatta running it back towards the halfway line. Another replacement being made. Stan Jurd has, Jurd has been replaced in the Parramatta side. Chris Phelan is on to uh, see out the closing 17 minutes of this game. Phelan on for Stan Jurd. S Steve Sharp has gone to hooker with Steve Edge off the field. Don Duffy on the ground in the second row. The pass comes inside to Duffy now and he runs it back upfield. It's a good, strong run. In fact, that's Phelan who's made the break. He's lost the ball and Parramatta, Manly come up with it. It's gone out to Sigsworth, running across field and a lovely tackle there by uh, Don Duffy. Sigsworth just over the halfway line, plays it, rebate to Thompson, across field to McCabe, caught by Sterling. The ball's gone loose, Sterling's knocked it on and the tackle count starts again as Manly get it back. Now to Paul Vorton. Up the middle he goes, got away from Mayers. 
diving in his legs though was second rower Steve Sharp Paul Vaughan plays it Ray Brown waits for someone to run onto it it's McCabe who picks it up and a solid hit there by Chris Phelan and how good tackle by Phelan on McCabe Ray Brown goes from dummy half across field waits for someone to arrive on the scene threw a pass out to Gray Media. it's gone to Boasted Boasted on the far wing slips though as he comes to the defence Eventually, he's caught by Eller on the far side after getting inside the Parramatta quarter line. Manly trying desperately to get back into the game, trying everything they know now in the last 15 minutes of the game. The ball is loose, picked up just short of the quarter line. Noel Cleo running up the line. One tackle to go. After this, we'll be going to uh, Roy Masters. Ball put in the air there by Blake. Down it comes. Brett Kenny's got it. Grounded in goal. Once again, Brett Kenny as safe as houses, taking the high bomb underneath his goalposts. Well, let's get a final opinion now uh, on the tactics employed in this game. Back across to Roy Masters. Well, Alan, it's obvious that Bob Fulton has uh, decided to play uh, Parramatta in their own half, and this is why uh, Parramatta are having so much difficulty. It was only, of course, for a brief five minutes at all, just after half time, uh, that uh, Parramatta have, um, have, have shown anything at all in this second half. Uh, and uh, it's really a leaf taken right out of Parramatta's book, the way that uh, Manly are playing. They're attempting to stand in the tackles and keep the ball alive. They're attempting to be positive. They've taken the attitude that we've got everything to gain and absolutely nothing to lose and uh, that is the way that uh, they've been playing, throwing absolutely uh, caution uh, to, to the wind and there has been a little bit of discipline of course in Manly's play too where the back rowers are tending to play more around the rucks and, uh, and uh, the, uh, the outside backs, particularly John Rebo, are tending to stay out on their wing. I, of course, I still believe that uh, Parramatta will win, of course, with an 18-6 lead and uh, only 15 minutes to go uh, in a grand final and with a disciplined team that would have to inevitably be the result. But I think the, uh, the, uh, the pundits, the experts of rugby league uh, will have to say uh, that uh, the 1983 grand final was won by Parramatta, but uh, there was a tremendous uh, resurgence of play by, uh, by Manly in the, the final 35 minutes of the game. Roy, just stay there a minute. We've got a kick put in the air by Blake. It's coming down close to the goal line, and again, Kenny's got it. Close to the goal line. Superb take. Uh, Roy Masters, we've got uh, two uh, fairly defensive players there in Don Duffy. And Chris Phelan being set on. Here's Mick Cronin with a great break down the touchline. Cronin's got support both sides. He gives it to Eric Graif. He gets it inside now towards Lydiard. Lydiard's caught up after crossing the quarter line. Great play from the master, Mick Cronin. Well done. Mick Cronin with a burst of about 50 metres. Put Parramatta on the attack. They're still going with Ella now. Not quite knowing where to throw it. I see Mark Laurie to come on shortly as a replacement for Parramatta. I just want to uh, get one point from Roy Masters in a second, but we'll wait with Parramatta only 10 metres out from the Manly goal line. The ball is being played. There's Paul Mears, the dummy half. Eight metres out, gives it to Ella. Ella's close, throws the pass. It's been dropped by Kenny and it's knocked on. He could have scored, but he knocked on. Now Mark Laurie is coming on. And uh, it looks like Paul Mayers is off. Mayers off. Laurie on. Duffy on. And Chris Phelan on. Roy, I just wanted to uh, get your opinion about the fact that uh, Steve Edge has not been replaced by a specialist hooker. Yes, I can't believe that. Uh, certainly something that I would never ever do, but uh, Jack Gibson seems to uh, know his, his players very well. Of course, we know that there's been an important rule change this year and that the, uh, that the side that wins the scrum normally is the side with both the head and the feed, which therefore means that the hooker is pretty much uh, the, the way of, of a sixth forward. But... Um, uh, in a grand final, I, I still believe, uh, particularly with a, a game as, uh, as uh, physical and as close and as hard as this, uh, the possession is everything. It's something that I wouldn't have gambled on. And, um, and uh, I really can't see uh, why he has done it, uh, particularly uh, with pulling off uh, Mayers as well, who is, uh, is a good strike side prop. Right. OK, Roy, thanks for that. Here's Parramatta on the attack and Ray Price is bullocking his way to the line. He's got within three metres to within three metres of the line. Ray Price is going to play it. Parramatta lined out towards the western side of the ground. The ball behind the ruck to Sterling. Quick pass. It's gone across field. Another long one on the burst. Ella, Ella must know he's there. He's just brought down short of the line. A smoke bomb thrown into the in-goal area by one of the spectators. And that's not good news. Meanwhile, a penalty from the play of the ball. 
Goes to Manly. Parramatta had the ball. Kenny has been uh, penalised. And there's a smoke, a smoke bomb, a, a, a putrid, very bright blue smoke bomb that has gone off in the in goal area. And the referee just waiting for all the fumes to blow away before he allows play to continue. We've had a report from uh, David Morrow. Steve Edge uh, replaced with an eye injury. He also suffered an injury to his wrist, but an eye injury to uh, Steve Edge. And we've got another replacement being made now in the Manly side. Glenn Ryan is already on there. Paul Vorton is off. Of all people, Paul Vorton has been replaced. How many tackles for Paul, please, Bill? 28 all day. 28. And it looks like Rick Chisholm is going to come on. And I wouldn't be at all surprised to see Philip Blake replaced as halfback in this uh, Manly side. Well, Manly have got the ball. They've found touch midway between the quarter line and halfway. 11 metres from the half. Uh, from fu- 11 minutes from half let me start again 11 minutes from full time and now 11 minutes, 11 metres from halfway ball to be played, back to Brown out to the blind side, Blake gets a long pass it's gone out to Gerard. another long one to McCabe accelerates, gives it out there to Rebay caught by Graith head on these two wingers having a good duel today Eric Graith obviously though has got the better of it having scored a superb try it's gone out wider, there's Ryan on the burst crunches into the defence and held to the ground by two of the Parramatta forwards. From Ray Brown, the pass goes to Philip Blake. He tries a high kick. It's coming down now to Taylor. Waiting for it. Up they go. Ray Price got there. Well, if ever there's any worries about Paul Taylor's ability to field the high bomb, he doesn't have to worry. He's got plenty of support in Kenny and Price. Meanwhile, Parramatta have got it through their left winger, David Lydiard, who's been tackled by Glenn Ryan. Time running out for Manly now. We've got just on nine and a half minutes remaining. And Parramatta safely, I think, have got this match in their keeping. 18 p- uh, points to six, the score. And Parramatta in possession on the halfway line. Peter Wynn getting to his feet to play it for Parramatta. The quick pass goes across to the open side. There's Cronin. Delays a pass and intercept. Very nearly a try given away by Craner with that pass that was intercepted by Alan Thompson, but he didn't have the pace to get away from the defence. But it means that Manly can now go into attack, and they're 25 metres out. Gerard Blake gets it out. There's Brown. Long one to Sigsworth. He waits. It was Schubert got a pass. It's gone right across field now to Bosted, who has run into trouble. Ray Brown gives it to Sigsworth. He doesn't quite know what to do with it. Unloads to McCabe, who loses the ball as he goes to ground but it went behind him and he recovered Sigsworth still got it caught by Eric Graith again in from the wing doing the work of a second rower and Sigsworth was hurt in that tackle of Graith's gets up as he holds his shoulder plays the ball out from Brown to Blake there it's gone across to Schubert again he delays a pass gets one back behind him now it's snapped up by Close who in turn is caught around the legs by Taylor one tackle to go for Manley will they try the bomb Alan Thompson tries a little grubber kick through Getting back there, Sharp leaves it for Kenny. And Kenny has got the ball as he's tackled by Glenn Ryan. Brett Kenny playing almost as a second fullback in the dying stages of this game. We've got the manly trainer on the field giving attention to Phil Sigsworth for a shoulder injury. And I think it's going to be a pretty sorry day for Phil Sigsworth. Who uh, has hurt that shoulder. And I fear very, very much for his sake, going to be on the... uh, the losing side in this game with just eight minutes to go, 18 to 6 the score. Yes, Alan, because uh, now's the time for control and discipline, and the uh, Parramatta have shown it uh, throughout, right throughout the game. Another change? Yes, another Parramatta player coming on. There's uh, Rick Chisholm is on for uh, Phil Blake, and uh, we've got another change in the Parramatta side. And uh, Parramatta have already made three of their replacements. And they're about to make another. And it looks as though uh, Greg Henry, the halfback, is going to come on. So Parramatta have got the ball on the quarter line. The touch judge comes in on the far side to report a tackle to referee Roberts. Chisholm involved in the game straight away. He's been called out by the touch judge, listening to the report being made to referee Roberts. And there will be a penalty, I think. 
Paul Tyler was the player tackled, and there is the penalty awarded to Parramatta. Penalty to power and time getting away. There's only about eight minutes remaining, and it looks like Phil Sixworth is not in real good shape. He's at, the trainer is with him at the moment, and uh, they keep looking. I'm sure that uh, the trainer feels that he should be replaced. Now Mick Cronin from the deep inside his own territory kicks for touch. Now the ball uh, has found touch, and uh, Parramatta play on close to half to halfway. Manly look as though they're going to make a replacement. I think Sixworth's going to come off with uh, Michael Blake coming on. Not on the field as yet. We still have Greg Henry waiting to come on as the fourth substitute for Parramatta. And I suppose this is Jack Gibson's way of uh, rewarding those players uh, who have done him uh, proudly during the season, giving them a run in the dying stages of a grand final. Phil Sigsworth has already left the field. He's been uh, given attention now by the Manly team doctor. And uh, they're showing some concern over his right shoulder. So Sigsworth off. Michael Blake on. Parramatta still have got the ball. It's second rower Duffy who's caught. Only about eight metres inside Manly's half. Far side of the ground. One tackle to go. Duffy to his feet. Plays at the field and unloads now to Sterling. Puts a high kick in the air. Waiting for it is Bosted. Up comes Edie. He's beaten to the ball by Lydiard, who drops the ball. It's gathered by Ryan, who's got it for, for Manly. Only 32 metres out from the Manly goal line. Long pass across field. Another long one. Michael Blake out to Chris Close, but he's set upon by Mick Cronin. Ball and all. Now to Michael Blake. He just can't get through the defence. Runs into trouble. Now it's gone from Ray Brown. Gets another long pass out to Paul McCabe. Another long one to Bosted. A bit of room on the far side. Looks for support inside, but well taken. Good defence out wide by Don Duffy. Plays it now to Schubert. In comes the pass. Chisholm gave it back. Alan Thompson unloads. Cleo goes for a run. He's caught head on. Got away though from Wynn. Caught by Sterling. Wynn comes again. And together they put him down 12 metres from the halfway line. Ray Brown calls for the ball to be put in the air. Gives it to Chisholm, who in turn tries the bomb. It's a high one. Waiting for it is Taylor. Eyes on the ball all the way. Never took them off the ball. Took the ball safely and then comes back to within 15 metres of the halfway line. About five minutes to go in the game. Parramatta 18, leading Manly 6. Eric Grape going for a run, and he's almost down to the halfway mark. It looks all over by the shouting, doesn't it? Parramatta just completely have this game uh, in, in their charge. They're just taking the time. They're in no hurry to do anything fancy now. They've only got to look at the scoreboard. 18 points to 6, five minutes to go. Uh, it's all theirs. It's their third premiership in a row. And uh, they realise this, they won't be doing anything stupid. They'll be taking it in, one out, just taking it up, meeting the manly defence. Uh, I'm afraid the game has been one lost. Listen to those Parramatta fans urging their team on to their third successive premiership. And I think even the manly players now know that it's a foregone conclusion and a forlorn hope just playing out the last four or five minutes. As we see exemplified in a grubber kick by Paul Taylor... Now, Greg Henry, the Parramatta substitute halfback, is still warming up on the touchline, and there is another Parramatta player who's gone out to join him, and that looks to be Gary Martini, and only one of those two can come on because already there are three substitutes on the field for Parramatta. The scrum has been won by Manley. It goes out to fullback Graham Eady. I'm sorry, Graham, you're going to finish your career in Sydney on a losing note as he passes now to Michael Blake, gives it to Ryan. That was forward, but the referee not in a position to see it. And Ryan is going to play it only 15 metres out from his goal line. Rick Chisholm passes out to Schubert. Who in my book has not resembled uh, a lock forward today. Anyway, that's not the only one that, one of Manley's worries. Uh, I think uh, they'll at least be happy that the season is at an end. Because they've been put out of their misery by a well-drilled Parramatta side today. And here again we see that exemplified by the pass from... Glenn Ryan to Rebo, going behind Rebo and into touch. A replacement has come on. Gary Martini is on the field. And Peter Sterling is being asked to leave the field and getting a hero's reception. Listen to that.
Well, Roy Masters, if you're still over there, uh, we've talked about uh, no specialist hooker in the Parramatta side. What about uh, Peter Sterling being replaced by a lock forward? Well, unfortunately, Alan, uh, Roy has had to leave early, but uh, it, it really is uh, a good display by Parramatta. They've uh, they've been been in con full control, really. It's been a, a great defensive effort. Thanks, Steve. I'm Mike Stevenson. Ball is played. Parramatta within two and a half minutes of their third successive premiership. Ray Price bursting through and he's tackled by Cleal and Schubert, 20 metres out from the line. We'll be staying here at the ground at the end of the uh, call for the presentation to be made by the Prime Minister, Mr Bob Hawke, to the uh, captain and coach of the winning side. And that is going to be Parramatta with two minutes to go. They're leading by 18 points to six. Reg. Yes, Alan, and uh, congratulations to Parramatta for a very professional, very impressive and well-deserved win here today. Uh, we, we heard the, the, the pre-match uh, lead up to it, that Manly forwards would, uh, would be their, their strength, but uh, of course it's been the Parramatta defence. It's been a, a fine win based on this well-organised, well-drilled defence. Noel Cleal has the ball at the moment. He's tried all day to try and get Manly back into this game. Graham Eady up into the back line as much as possible, but it's it's the, the cover defence. And for that, I must give Ray Price a lot of credit. He's had an outstanding game. The, the back row three, Peter Wynn, Steve Sharp, I think have had outstanding games because of this defensive uh, setup. The Parramatta pack have played as a unit. And in fact, I think they've even got on top of their Manly counterparts. And uh, as a result, the Manly backs, Peter Sterling, who's just been replaced for his and rewarded for his efforts had an outstanding game Michael Cronin he showed his vast experience and he's, he's certainly been uh, very level headed out there uh, controlling his fellows and as I said it's been a very professional performance Paul Taylor at the back there Brett Kenny he's, he took three bombs under extreme pressure and uh, he, he certainly an excellent game he's, he's uh, scored two tries in the game and uh, he's had a lot to do with the Parramatta performances. For Manly, Noel Cleal, Phil Sigsworth has had a fair sort of a game. Alan Thompson has tried desperately. They've all tried, of course, but they've been outclassed by a, a very professional uh, Parramatta team. Well, Parramatta aren't done with yet. They're looking for more points in the dying seconds of the game. Only seconds remaining. We're trying uh, to get uh, David Morrow out onto the arena just in front of the fence and uh, David might be able to give us some of the atmosphere from down there meanwhile here's another drop goal attempt by Steve Eller it's unsuccessful the full time siren has gone and there it is full time siren has gone Parramatta are premiers And I feel sure that that was a story told in the first 15 minutes of the game. And you heard Roy Masters' assessment even at that stage. He said, Manly are gone. And did he prove to be correct? 18-6 to six the score. Parramatta defeating Manly Warringah, their third successive premiership. Parramatta led 12-0 at half-time. They've run out winners by 18 points to six. For Parramatta, two tries to Brett Kenny, one to Eric Graith. Mick Cronin, three goals from four attempts. For Manly, a try to Phil Sigsworth. Graham Eady's conversion was his only shot at goal. 18-6 to six was the score. A crowd of 40,285. And shortly we're going to have the uh, presentation by Mr Robert Hawke, Prime Minister of Australia. And the Parramatta team go out over towards the hill underneath the scoreboard here at the cricket ground to congratulate and share with their supporters who have stuck with them through many an, uh, an adverse situation uh, this year. And the Parramatta fans are ecstatic. So there it is. 18-6, to 6, the full-time score. Let's get the tackle count and other statistics from Bill McGowan. Yeah, the scrums finished up favouring mainly 10-6. The penalties favoured Parramatta 8-7. Uh, in uh, general play, Parramatta kicked 19 times and mainly 18. 
in the tackle count, the top tackling backs for uh, Manly were Chris Close with 16, Phil Sixworth with 16, and Alan Thompson with 18. In the forwards, Ian Schubert, 18, Noel Cleal, 10, Paul Vorton, 28, Paul McCabe, 21, he missed 5, Ray Brown, 31, Jeff Gerrard, 29, he missed 3. And for the 1983 Premier's Parramatta, their top tackling back was Peter Sterling with 17, he missed 3, Ray Price, 31, Steve Sharp, 20, Peter Wynn, 23, Paul Mayers, 23, he missed 4, Stephen Edge, 18, and Stan Jurd, 18, and uh, back to Alan. Thank you, and this stage we might take you down to the arena and uh, let's get a taste of the atmosphere down there, down to David Morrow. Alan, it's absolutely electric down here, as you'd guessed, uh, with the electric eels, absolutely uh, ecstatic. Uh, actually, when Peter Sterling came back into the dressing room, he was an extremely happy Stephen Edge had greeted him. I've got Michael Craden coming across. Michael, how does it feel to win three in a row? Uh, very nice, very nice, yeah. Is it uh, really as tough out there as it looked from out, uh, in being in the grandstand? Well, it was a tough game. We expected a tough game. Possibly the worst thing from our point of view if we scored straight after half time, I think. For about a quarter of an hour, we pulled up. We saw that great magic of Mick Craner. Many people have said he was the man of the match, and you made that dash down the sideline late in the game. Uh, fabulous football. Uh, did you feel that was one of your better games this season? Well, Polly, to be truthful, in parts, I was a bit disappointed in parts of the game, but as I think, I was happy with the result of the game. You know, there was parts of my games I thought could have been a bit better today, but the overall result, I'm very happy. Michael Craner, best of luck and enjoy tonight. Well, Alan, it's, uh, as you can guess, uh, everyone down here, especially all well, I'm being showered with champagne, which is, I suppose, only to be expected uh, in amongst these uh, Parramatta fellows. I've got David Lydiard with me now. David, congratulations on your first ever premiership. Just how does it feel? Third grade last year, first grade this year? It's unreal. You can't describe the feeling. It's so great. How were the nerves before the game? It was, it was better than normal. I wasn't as nervous as I was the last couple of weeks, and... As soon as we got that try up on the board, and everything just went, and I just thought about winning the game like the rest of the players, and it was great. What so, was the match build-up like? Uh, you went out there and played like men possessed in the early parts of that match. Uh, was that the plan, to really get on top and just stay there? It was a plan for every game we played, and it just uh, happened better than usual this game, and we come up with a win, and it's, it's unreal. You can't put it into words, the feeling. Were you surprised that early on that you got on top so early, easily? Well, we've got the players to do it, like Eric and Brett and the ball skills and Peter. And they come up with the goods, and I like every game, and we've got the points, so it's unreal. David Lydio, congratulations, well done. David, you might see if you can get across to uh, perhaps have a word with one of the Manly players too. Obviously, they're very disappointed, but uh, I see Paul Borton down there. It's not often that uh, you see a player like Borton replaced uh, in a game, and I can see you wandering over towards the Manly camp. And uh, they're a very disappointed uh, group of uh, players, I, I feel very, very sure. But... Uh, Bad luck for the Manly team. Uh, they won the minor premiership so easily this year that they were considered a big threat in this game. And uh, let's see, uh, back down to you, David. I've got Paul Vaught with me at the moment, Alan. It must be a very disappointing feeling uh, to be replaced and lose the game. Yeah, it's not real good. Just uh, just what went through your mind there? They seemed to shell-shock you early when they raced away to that 12-0 lead. Oh, when shell-shocked, we just um, lost to our own mistakes. Dropping ball weren't good enough. Did you feel before the game that uh, everything was going to go all right for Manly today today? Well, it doesn't matter now, does it? So, who cares? Hard luck to Paul Horton. I hope next year that you're there and uh, being out, going out onto that dice to receive one of those mugs, you certainly deserve all the accolades you received this season. Alan, obviously a very disappointed Manly camp down here and uh, a lot of the players are, are feeling very de dejected, uh, not talking to... Uh, uh, very much to anyone, with the exception of Graham Eady, obviously, and uh, we might try and get hold of Graham in a second, uh, being his last game uh, as a rugby league player. I know, David, uh, just before you continue, we're going to take this presentation. Uh, if you can get hold of uh, Graham uh, a little bit later on, we'll come back to you. But uh, we might take you down to uh, the presentation dais. And at the moment, we've got the President of the New South Wales Rugby League, Mr Tom Bellew. The Prime Minister of Australia, Mr Bob Hall. When we asked Mr Hawke to attend the grand final, I assured him that the rugby league people of New South Wales would give him a rousing welcome, and you certainly haven't let me down. Mr Hawke, we know, takes an interest in rugby league in this state through his participation in the number one membership of the Canberra Raiders. Although he's a Victorian, he's got a great knowledge of rugby league. He even told me when there was a knock on this afternoon, he only missed out on one occasion. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr Hawke, to present the JJ Gilton and Shield to the Parramatta side, and congratulations to Parramatta from the New South Wales Rugby League.
Tom uh, Ballou, Mr. Stan Costick out of Winfield, and ladies and gentlemen, I know I speak even for the Manly supporters in saying congratulations to Parramatta for your magnificent achievement in winning this uh, premiership for the three years in a row. This is certainly, 1980s have been the decade of the eels, and it's really getting, you have to get back to the period of the 50s and 60s for those legendary achievements of St George to think of people winning it three years in a row. And we certainly congratulate you uh, uh, on what you've done, the players, Steve Edge, captain, Steve uh, Gibson, the uh, Jack Gibson, the coach, uh, for all you've done to get them here today and get them up to win. I know, of course, again, also, we'll be speaking for the Parramatta supporters when we say bad luck and congratulations to Manly for the way you played the game. You tried your heart out, but on the day, you met a better side. Now, I want to say that uh, this year, for the first year, the uh, Rugby League have made an application uh, for financial assistance, and I'm very pleased on this appropriate occasion to announce uh, that the government is going to make the sum of $100,000 available to the rugby, rugby League for the promotion of Junior Rugby League amongst the young people. Now, my friends, what sport's all about in this country? You know, when it comes to grand final time, one, one of a lot of us is barracking for one side, another lot for the other. I've been very fortunate yesterday in picking the winner in Melbourne. I backed Hawthorne. Here today, I uh, back Parramatta. Now, I know that yesterday there would have been a lot barracking against me for Essendon. I know today that there would have been a lot barracking against me for Manly. But I took a bet on the trifecta. I've got the first two legs up, and I know that all Australians are going to be with me in the third leg of the trifecta because I backed Australia too to beat Liberty. Yesterday on the MCG, I know that I had 120,000 of my fellow Australians when there. I sent a message across because we thought we were going to be up this morning, didn't we, listening to it. But I sent a message on behalf of 120,000 Australians at the MCG to Alan Bond, to John Bertrand and the crew because we thought they were going to be racing this morning. I had 120,000 with me there and I know that we've got the 40-odd thousand here in the SCG when I know you will join with me in saying that we send to Bondi, to Bertrand and the Australian crew the best of wishes for Tuesday morning. And may I also say this, I know on behalf of all of you and everyone who had the opportunity of watching on television, congratulations to Winfield for organising that magnificent opening to the uh, game and to everyone that was involved in it. It made you proud to be an Australian. Mr. Bob so, Moore. ladies and gentlemen, I conclude again as I began by now speaking on behalf of all of you, even the Manly supporters, in saying to you at Parramatta, congratulations on a great season on getting here today and congratulations on a magnificent game. Mr Bob Hawke, the Prime Minister of Australia, about to present the uh, JJ Gilton and Shield and the Winfield Cup to Steve Edge. And Stephen Edge now just being called up. And he's done this before. Steve Edge now as his captain of a fifth Premiership winning side in Sydney. And that's an incredible record. And he's done that with two clubs. Firstly with St George. We have uh, three of the senior brigade in the Parramatta side, Ray Price, Mick Crane and, and Steve Edge just holding the Gilton and Shield aloft. And uh, after we hear the response from uh, Steve Edge, we'll go back into uh, our comments uh, on the game from uh, Mike Stevenson, Reg Gaznia and Gary Cook. Full-time score, Parramatta have won their third success successive premiership. They've defeated Manly by 18 points to six after leading 12-0 at half time. Bill. And could I say something Alan, that uh, about six weeks ago you asked all the experts uh, who would win the Premiership and Thank every ABC Prime commentator Minister. was right when they Thank said you Parramatta. On of the New South Wales and Australian Rugby League. Alright, we just might leave the uh, public address for the moment and we'll start with our comments and uh, firstly we could go across I think to Mike Stevenson. Mike, uh, your thoughts on the game please. 
Yes, well, a very professional side, Parramatta, and congratulations to for a job well done, and a job well done indeed. It's, uh, it was so pleasing to see the men that have been around at the, the Parramatta side for so many years, Steve Edge, Michael Cronin, Ray Price. These, these three players today certainly stamped their authority on it. And it's good to see Price bouncing back into the game, and uh, especially with uh, Michael Cronin showing all the finesse, all the speed that uh, was supposed to have left him. Uh, but uh, what a great football and what a what a great uh, way to bow out of rugby league if, uh, for, for him to take out this third premiership. But I've got to take my hat off to the coach, Jack Gibson, because I took a gamble. He certainly took a bigger gamble. I thought that they would throw, this, uh, throw the ball around in the first 15 minutes. It was at a time when I felt Manly would be most susceptible because they've only played two games within a month. And really, that really was a tale of the, of the day because they scored twice in the first 12 minutes and really from there on in it was really an uphill battle for Manly. Uh, full credit to Manly when uh, they were down by 18 points to nil they came back at least to score a try and uh, try to make it a bit of enthusiasm into the ABC Listen. It's hard not to love Bluey, whatever your age. So here's your chance to take a deep dive behind the scenes. We showed a whole game of cricket, just shots of seagulls and churches in Adelaide. The cricket commentator was voiced by Adam Hills, who's an Australian comedian. He actually came up with a lot of the little puns and they're really quite funny, so we sort of slipped them in where we could. The new podcast, Behind Bluey, only on the ABC Listen app.